Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about what if Naruto found out who his parent were and learning his bloodline part 1 before I start please do support for more. Amazing content and comments for part 2, do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends and check out the description as well let's start the video. Finally, I got it. The boy known as Naruto Uzumaki shouted as he arrived at the designated clearing that Mizuki told to go to. His task was to steal the forbidden scroll and learn a jutsu from it. When he opened, he cried out in annoyance that the first jutsu was a clone jutsu his worst technique. That was when he noticed his own name was in the scroll. It seemed that the name itself was a blood seal the Iraka talked about once. Yeah, he pays attention when things are interesting. So he cut his finger and out popped a scroll addressed to him. But he just put it away for the moment as he had a jutsu to learn and about an hour later. He had gotten down the shadow clone jutsu. It did not seem that anyone was coming yet, so he opened the scroll addressed to him and read the contents. Dear Naruto, I am so sorry that I could not be with you in your early years of life. No doubt that Sarutobi did his best to protect you but, I am guessing the idiots in the council hampered that. Oh, by the way, my name is Kushina Uzumaki your mother. I died giving birth to you too early I would assume. But it is not because of you. It is because the Kyubi no Kitsune has come to our village and the stress of that pushed me to an early birthing. Now there is something you must be told because I think the old monkey has not told you these important things for your own protection. 1. Your father is Minato Namikaze, the Yellow Flash. Yep your dad is the fourth Hokage, please don't let it get to you head. 2. He had to choice but to seal that beast into a newborn baby that night because it could not be killed or contained into anything normal. Please don't hate your father for this, you would have done the same as well because I don't think you could ask someone else to give up their child I too was reluctant. 3. The old monkey may not know this but you have two bloodlines and I am guessing the QB's power is holding them back. One is called the Yuzigan and the other is a unique chakra-based bloodline. In the seal below is information about these two. Please read them my little maelstrom and good luck in life. Your mother, Kushina Uzumaki. Naruto leaned his head against the tree he was next to and stared off into space. His mom didn't hate him like he thought. But his father was the source of the all the pain he had in life so far. It was a bit much. But he could deal with it just like everything else thrown at him. The real question was how the hell was going to talk to the monster in his gut. It must have heard his thoughts because, he was sucked within his subconscious. To put it bluntly, his mind was a freaking sewer of all things. It annoyed him but he had to plow on through the ankle-high waters at least he hoped it was water to red glow at the end. He soon came upon a huge ass cage of some sort that also had a small paper seal on it that seemed to be a lock. Okay I am guessing that this is the QB's cage. You are correct boy said a booming voice and behind the bars came a set of huge razor-like teeth and two big red eyes. Okay I have a few questions for you. Will you unlock my bloodlines for me and why did you attack in the first place? The great fox sighed and said, because of a genjutsu, that someone I thought was dead, was used on me. The genjutsu made me watch how he killed my mate and my kits, and that drove me insane so much that he was able to control my actions, and well you know the rest. I see so who was it anyway? It was Madara Uchiha but he did not seem himself was more evil. Now on to you other question. Since I want to see my family again and to unlock your three bloodlines, I will have to die. Wait, mom said I only have two. Well, your mom didn't know you have a bloodline that is very old and since I am very old, I know what it is and I can unlock it. Now boy are you ready, as I'll ever be. Naruto said as the QB smirked and sent all his power into Naruto, destroying the seal and flooding Naruto's chakra coils. When the outside, Mizuki and Iraka arrived just in time to see Naruto's body being lifted into the air by some unknown. That is all the proof that I need that Naruto is the fucking demon. Mizuki growled out as I charged the boy's body while Iraka was yelling at him to stop he should have listened because as soon as the traitorous Chunin got within arm's length of boy, the red chakra formed a ball of energy around the boy and incinerated the white-haired man. The ball then began to expand and Iraka knew he was in trouble. So he took the forbidden scroll and got as far away from the inferno as possible. Good thing too, because as soon as the teacher's shun shined out of there, the ball of red chakra expanded to that of an apartment building and then a few more. After that, nine protrusions blasted outward for half a mile before the chakra turned blue and arced upward. They connected at the top and the ball expanded some more. Sarutobi saw this and paled wondering what was going on with Naruto, while some of the idiot council members smirked thinking that this was the perfect chance to have Naruto killed. The head of the Hyuga clan, Hayashi actually smiled at the ball of energy, freaking even the elders who were watching. Looks like Yusun finally got his bloodline. The ball of pure blue chakra then exploded upward, 
sending a dragon of chakra upward before it turned direction and shot downward, right back into Naruto and the shockwave of the event, destroyed everything around him that was not already gone created a deep crater in the ground. Iroko was the first to return to the spot to see that was Naruto was alive and well, and it seemed that his appearance has changed a bit. Naruto no longer had the whisker marks, he was a bit taller, he had red tips to his hair, and the boy had two katanas at his side. That was the sight the Hokage and 30 Anbu came upon. One of the Anbu took one look at Naruto, growled, and charged at him, yelling for him to die. One of the other Anbu, one with a Nico mask, chopped his neck. Idiot. Thank you Niko-san. The old man sighed. Come on, let's get this cleaned up hopefully Naruto will wake up soon. Hokage's office 20 minutes later, Naruto finds himself in the old man's office with the old man, his old Anbu guardian Nico and two others. One looks very sick while the other has a saban in his mouth. Okay what's up? I was hoping you could tell me what happened to you Naruto. You steal the forbidden scroll and then you're the source of a chakra explosion. Well after I learned one jutsu from the scroll to pass the genin exam like Mizuki said, I found a scroll in it that was addressed to me from my mom, Kushina Uzumaki. Naruto said but didn't the three other people in the room stiffen but the Hokage saw and inwardly groaned he was in for one hell of a night. I read the scroll, found out I am the container of the Kyubi who told me why he attacked and then unlocked my bloodlines for me, found out who my mom was and also my dad, the yellow flash. The Hokage looked very nervous now. Let me guess, you hid who I really was from everyone because my dad had a lot of enemies? Yes now, I guess you learned that jutsu so I will honor Mizuki's test even though it was a trick and give you the headband be at the academy in two days, the Hokage said as Naruto left and the three others in the room glared at the old man. I am so get too old for this shit. The next day, Naruto had woken up late from the night's activities and once he did his usual morning rituals, he took his mom's letter and unseals another scroll with the kanji for bloodlines. He also noticed a piece of paper next to his bed that was from the Kyubi. He took the Kyubi's letter and read it first. Naruto, the power that I unlocked is very old and not many people will know about it. Have you ever thought how the Shinigami got his power and how much power he has? Well, he was the king of the Shinigami. When he was in power, he had thousands of other low-level Shinigami to help him in getting the souls of the dead to his land soul society. A race known as Hollows came one day too and pretty much destroyed them all. There were survivors and you are the descendant of them if you ever find soul society you will find the Shinigami and a place where you truly belong. Good luck trying to figure out your powers. Age ha 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 ha. Kyubi. G thanks Naruto deadpanned as he took his mom's scroll and read through it. It would seem that the Yuzugan is similar to the Sharingan in that it copies Jutsu. There is one catch, it is does not keep the normal jutsu it copies and it mimics bloodline jutsu and lets him keep the bloodline jutsu. It also lets him see chakra, cancel jinjutsu, keep up with taijutsu and pretty much be an expert in ninjutsu. Then the other bloodline is what he got from his dad. That flying thunder god jutsu was just a speed enhancement, and since his grandma was Tsunade, it could be in his legs or the arm's weight. My grandma is Tsunade, his life just got a lot more complicated. After the shock of learning his powers and who he was related to, he decided that he needed a new wardrobe. Of course he got kicked out of nearly every shop until he came to a shinobi shop called the Wolf's Claw. As soon as he went in, he was greeted by an older man who looked like a blacksmith and a girl who looked to be a year older than him, who wore a pink Chinese shirt, baggy pants and had her hair in buns. He knew her from when he was a kid because the old man used to let her play with him. Hey Naruto, he, long time no see Tenten. Naruto said happily, Ah, uh, so I saw you have finally become a ninja. You were also in my class, remember? Yeah, but like usual, the teachers held me back. Okay, I know they don't like you that much but that was just stupid. Yeah well, at least I am ninja now. I am happy for you. Tenten said with a smile as she put a hand on Naruto's shoulder. So I am guessing you want to get out of those clothes and get real ninja clothes. Yep. Naruto said as he pumped his fist in the air. Good. Said the old man. Just take a look at the clothes and bring them up when you're done, and since this is your first time here, you get the stuff for free. Naruto thanked the man and walked to the clothes section with Tenten right behind him. She helped him get something that looked good but was functional for a ninja. She also asked where he got those swords and he replied that he got them from his chakra. She just drooled at the thought of getting some sort pointy blade from her chakra. In the end, he had black shinobi sandals, black baggy pants with many pockets, a black muscle shirt and a white cloak with black flames on the bottom and the kanji for Shinigami on the back. He got six pairs of this, and he also found an odd scroll that said, Chakra, the spiritual and the physical. 
so he got the scroll as well because it sounded interesting. As soon as he left Tent and turned to her father and said, So, will you tell me why he is hated cause I know pranks are not that bad even the last one with the Hokage monument. I do have to admit that was funny. The old man sighed and said, I cannot, you have to ask him yourself, or the Hokage himself. It is not a matter I can speak of. Tenten sighed, giving it up for now. While Naruto was walking back to his home, he was reading the scroll that he got while had the scroll that held his clothes were in his back pocket. He found that you can split your chakra to use either side of it. Tsunade was famous for using the physical part thanks to her strength. He did wonder how the author knew this but he also didn't care that much. He continued to read until he got back to his place, and once he dropped off the closed scroll, an ANBU showed up. Uzumaki-san, the council demands you presence. The ANBU said, while Naruto sighed and nodded. Said ANBU then put a hand on Naruto's shoulder, and they shun shine to the council doors. When they got there, they noticed the Hokage there with annoyed look. Well, let's get this over with old man, they probably want to know what happened yesterday. The Hokage nodded as they entered to find the Shinobi Council very annoyed at the Civilian Council and the elders. As soon as he walked in, they were demanding for him to be killed for endangering Konoha. It went on with both sides yelling at each other. Hayashi kept quiet like usual but he noticed Naruto getting really pissed off at all the noise and began channeling chakra to his arms and fists. He almost widened his eyes when he saw the chakra turn to physical chakra, the same chakra that Tsunade used. He smirked thinking that this would be quite the show. Since he had a crap load of chakra, he only had to put a bit of that into his arms and fists to make this work. Sure it was a lot to other people, but to him, not so much. He got an annoyed tick mark on his head and yelled, shut the hell up, while slamming his fists down on the table. The effect was instant because as soon as he hit the table, it blew up into splinter around him, while the rest of the table spider webbed and then fell apart. The civilian council was now shaking in fear while the shinobi council had their eyes bugging out well except for Hayashi that is. Now shut up and let me tell you what happened. That night I was tricked into stealing the scroll by Mizuki. I got connected by the beast and it offered to unlock my bloodlines. Now the reason it sacrificed itself to do this was because it lost its family thanks to an Uchiha, and not just any Uchiha Madara Uchiha. He must have survived that battle with the Shodame, and since he already hated Konoha you get the picture. How are we supposed to believe a demon like you? A stupid villager said. Do you hear yourself? You call me a demon, but if you think about it, all you civilians attacked me when I was younger. Now if I was the demon, you all would have been dead a long time ago because demons don't take that shit. Also if you have taken a look at me in the last few minutes I have been here, truly taken a look, you would have seen that the whisker marks that mark me as the container of the nine-tailed fox are gone. The seal holding the beast is now gone as well. So pull your heads out of your asses and use your fucking brains. Naruto said and at the end he was panting. He is correct and I also see now demon chakra in his system. I will admit that he does have a lot of it though. No doubt the demon chakra has been converted ahead of time to normal chakra. The fourth Hokage really did know what he was doing when he made that seal. Hayashi finally spoke, impressed by Naruto's speech. Why didn't say something like that before? Asked Inochi. The civilians would not believe me because they don't understand seals or shinobi matter that well. Why they have a say on this council is beyond me, Hayashi said with a glare to the civilians. He then smirked and said, besides, I knew how the seal works because was helping the boy's father make it after all since we were on the same team. Wait, what? A civilian nearly shouted. Hayashi sighed and said, like Naruto said, use your brains. Who does the boy look like? They all took a good look at Naruto who had been glaring at the civilian council and they gasped. A pink-haired civilian by the name of Sally Hirono growled at this. What is your problem? Inochi asked. I know who his mother must have been. That whore from Whirlpool. Kushina Uzumaki. She said while the other civilians were panicking. Troublesome you just edgy about because you could not get with the rich guy like the gold digger you are. I think that is why you are having your daughter go after the last Uchiha. Shikaka said while everyone chuckled at this. I bet you had most of the civilians hate Naruto for that fact alone, but hid behind the QB lies all you had to do was sleep with them. At this, most of the civilian council blushed while turning their heads away. I should have been with the fourth. Not that whore from Whirlpool. She screamed but shrunk back in fear because a large killer intent was directed at her thanks to Naruto. Look who's talking you bitch ha looks like my dad had pretty good taste in character. Naruto said from his spot. I am so glad you did not end up being my mom otherwise I would be a fucking idiot like you. Well, this has been fun and all but I need to give Naruto his inheritance, so this meeting is over. The Hokage said as he and Naruto stood up to leave. 
He turned back and said I will think on what high she said we truly don't need a civilian council with the Shinobi Council. As they left, the civilian council were in a panic. They needed to tell everyone that they had been wrong and fast or feel the wrath of the yellow flash and the red whirlpool in the afterlife. As for Danzo and the elders, he was plotting on getting Naruto exiled from the village he just needed the perfect excuse. Naruto sighed as he sat down in the chair across from the Hokage. Well, that was very annoying. Yes, but at least things will be changing. Good. Now, here are the keys to your father's home and a check card for your money. The old man said as he gave the blonde the said items. Now you should go and get your picture taken. Come on, let's go. They once again left the Hokage's office and went to the camera room. Once they got his picture done, a little kid busted into the room screaming that he would beat the old man, but tripped on his scarf and fell down. The kid got up, saw Naruto and yelled, You tripped me. No you just have two left feet kid that, and you tripped over that stupid scarf. Naruto deadpanned. Besides the hell are you doing in here? I am going to beat my grandfather, and the name is Konoamaru. The boy smirked as he thought that Naruto would be like the rest. He was dead wrong. Naruto sighed as he walked over to Konoamaru and flicked him across the room. Inori looked up at Naruto painfully as he said, Like I care whose grandkid you are. Besides, I don't think you can beat the Hokage of this place. Unless you use this the old man panicked as he knew what jutsu he was going to use. Sexy jutsu. Naruto called out as he turned into a naked girl and blew a kiss at the old fart. The old man fell over with blood shooting out of nose. Naruto turned back in time to see Ebisu enter, glare at Naruto, and then ask what happened. Naruto had left a few minutes after that, and when both men noticed that Konoamaru was not there, Ebisu panicked and went off to find him again. While the Hokage knew where he went to Naruto, with Naruto, Naruto's eye was twitching that was because for the last few minutes, a square rock had been following him. He sighed and finally turned around, rocks are not square. The rock exploded and revealed the coffin Konoamaru. Nice one boss, what do you want? Naruto asked. Why are you calling me boss? Because you are the boss. I want you to teach me that jutsu. Fine, but know this, there are no shortcuts to becoming Hokage. Naruto said as they walked off in the forest. A few hours later, in front of his new house, he was so glad he made that jutsu, he could weed out the perverts in this place. But who knew Ebisu was a closet perv? After he left Inari to do his own thing, he went to his new home and found that place to be huge. It was also surrounded by security seals, but thanks to his blood, he was able to enter. Once inside, he had his clones scope out the place and was pleased to see what they found out and the fact that the jutsu has the original learn what the clones learn. That would be useful for training. Anyway, he had a living room, a kitchen, a gym, a dojo, a rec room, and many other bedrooms. Yeah, he took the top bedroom that his parents must have used. He smiled to himself as he looked at all the pictures in the hallways. They were of his parents and a few other people, like his dad's old team and his students. The silver-haired kid looked his was a stick in the mud to him. There was a picture of his mom's students. One looked sickly, another was chewing a saban and had a bandana on, and the last one a girl with purple hair. They were interesting to say the least because he noticed that all of them had a blade. Hey, his mom must have taught them well. He looked out the window to see that it was already night time so he went to bed in his new bed. Tomorrow, he would train. The next day, in the dojo, after eating a good breakfast, he made a massive amount of clones to work on his chakra control that the scroll he had bought told him he should do. He was also having them do the academy jutsu till they don't have to do hand signs. He however was reading more of the scroll. After all, it helped up his strength thanks to the physical chakra. Strength like Sonate's is not all that one can do with this chakra. One can up their speed like the fourth Hokage. All one has to do is send that chakra to their legs and you will gain lots of speed. Beware, there is a reason the fourth Hokage had to use special kunai to truly use this power. This is not all. Physical chakra has another property that no ninja has ever used. I was used by people long ago their names lost to history. They were able to shoot the energy out of their hands and mouths and manipulate it into many attacks. After read that, Naruto stood up and pointed his hand at a nearby training dummy. He channeled the energy to his hand saw it forming a ball of energy around his hand. He then flung his hand and the ball basted apart the dummy. Wow this could really be useful. He then started channeling that energy to his leg like the scroll said, ignoring that warning. As he took his first step, he was blasted right through the wall and kept on going through town. The clones looked at the wall and grimaced, that had to hurt. Naruto screamed as he ran through the village, not able to stop at the moment. The Hokage heard him, along with everyone else and when they looked to see the boy, all they saw was a yellow blur before it was gone. 
he is going to be the death of me. The old man groaned, day of the team placements, and he was to the academy, he thought back to that attempt at gaining new speed. Epic failure was the phrase that came to mind. He had to rebuild everything he broke, which was quite a lot of walls. After he was done with that, he went looking for those special kunai the scroll talked about. He found a lot of them in a closet, but he really needed to learn sealing before he actually tried that again. Once inside the classroom, people looked at him oddly before Kibi yelled out, Who the hell are you? Well dog breath, it is me, Naruto and before you ask what I am doing here look at the headband. Naruto said. Everyone's eyes all bugged out at Naruto who was not in orange. Of course Hinata blushed like no tomorrow because his new clothes made him hotter in her eyes. He walked up the way to sit next to her, Shikamaru, and Choji. The lazy Nara took a look at Naruto, muttered something about troublesome blondes, and said, Where are those whisker marks, Naruto? Oh, they disappeared when my bloodlines activated. Naruto replied. This caught the Uchiha's attention. I bet they are weak nothing is better than the Sharingan says the Uchiha with no Sharingan yet. Naruto commented which made all the guy and some girls to laugh at that. Dobe what are your bloodlines anyway? Duck but asked. Naruto smirked and just sat there which made the pink-haired banshee scream at him. Show your powers you baka. Putting a pinky in his ear, Naruto replied. What are you, related to a banshee or something? Fine I will show you. He channeled his chakra to his eyes as they changed from to normal blue to blue with a golden spiral in them. So what does it do? Sakura demanded. You know, you are getting annoying so go away because I don't feel like telling you. Sakura screamed and charged him, intending to punch him but he caught her fist and then flicked her head. That sent her into the chalkboard. Iroko walked into the classroom at this point and sighed. Will someone pry her out of the chalkboard please I have teams to announce, and I need her to be conscious for it. Ino was the only one to help her out, and when that was done. Iroko began, Team 1 Team 7 is Sasuke. Sakura he was interrupted by her shout of joy, and sigh. Your sensei is Kakashi. Team 8 is Shino, Kiba, and Hinata. Your sensei is Kuringai. Team 9 is still alive, so we go 1 to Team 10, who is Ino, Shikamaru, and Choji. Your sensei is Asuma. Sakura took this time to gloat at Naruto. Ha! You didn't get a team you loser. Actually I was about to say where he goes before you interrupted me. Who cares, he will just die in the first week of being a ninja he is a weak baka. She said with a smirk, says the pink-haired banshee who got flicked into the chalkboard. Naruto commented which made everyone laugh. Anyway, Naruto is on a team by himself and is being taught by his mom's old students, Genma, Yugao, and Hate. Iruka said as they came in and looked at the Uchiha's team. Cough team 7 I pity you. Asterisk cough asterisk Kakashi is always late. Hate said while Sasuke smirked. Dobe you got shafted. Well come on Naruto. Genma said. Hey these guys were from that picture cool. Sasuke was annoyed. Why might you ask? Well, when you have a banshee pestering you for a date every five minutes, it tends to get annoying. Also, when that sickly looking jonin, hate was his name, told them their sensei would be late. He was not expecting that ass to be three hours late. So yeah, he was very annoyed. At least this Sai was not as annoying as the pink hair one. A thought then came to him and he voiced his question to the other two. Iruka said that Naruto's mom's old students would be teaching him. Who the hell was she? Probably was some whore. Sakura sneered. Actually, if you think on that fact that there was only one other Uzumaki in town, then you would know, but she is dead. Her name was Kushina Uzumaki, and what my father has told me was that she was on par with Swanda. Her nickname was the Red Whirlpool, and if I remember correctly of what he said, she was in a relationship with the fourth Hokage. Sai said. Both Sasuke and Sakura's eyes bugged out at this. For Sakura, it was the name of this one lady her mom just did not like for some reason. She began to think on it and scowled. Her mom was the one who was a whore. She told me to hate Naruto for that. I have got to be nicer to him not apologize to him somehow. The Uchiha's world was shell-shocked at this new information. His father hated the fourth for the reason that he was Hokage, and he scowled at that thought. His father was weaker than the Hokage, and he just knew it if his brother was able to kill him. He had connected to the two pieces and had a better respect for the blonde now. He was related to the Red Whirlpool and the Yellow Flash. He needed to battle him to gain more respect for the blonde, with Naruto. Naruto had just received his test from his new sensei, and he was pleased that he passed. He had to fight each one in a one-on-one -on -one duel with his two new blades. He was not very good with the blades but he thanked God that he went back to the Wolf's Claw to get a style. He was still getting the basics down, but he really liked the two styles he had chosen. 
If he used one sword, he would use the style used by Starkiller from SW, Force Unleash. But if he used the swords, he would use that style, along with doing his best to use another style. Still needs a lot of work. Well Naruto, you did well and I can see that you are trying to create your own style. Yugo said with a smile. So we will each teach you our styles and that might help. Along with that, we will be teaching you more chakra control exercises along with jutsu. Ginma said while chewing on his senban. We will also help you with your bloodlines as well, but first we need to know what element you are aligned with. Hate said as he handed Naruto a white piece of paper. Just channel some chakra into it. Naruto did so and was shocked along with his three teachers. It was cut to pieces and some of the pieces were on fire, crackled with lightning, got wet, and turned to dust. Hmm, that might be because of the Kyuubi's old chakra as it fused with me. Naruto commented. Well, we now know what to teach you. Genma said with a chuckle. Hey, before we start on anything. Could we get to know each other? I know you know me because of my mom but you know. Sure. Yugao said as they headed to a barbecue restaurant. Once they were seated and ordered their food, Yugao spoke again. I will go first. I am Yugao Yuzuki. I like my boyfriend hate, practicing in my sword style and hanging out with Karinai and Anko. I dislike perverts. My hobbies are training and spending time with hate. I guess my goal is to have a family. My name is hate Gecko. I like Yugao here in swords. I dislike being sick but it helps me win battles since people underestimate me. My hobbies are the same as my likes and my dream is to also have a family. Yeah, I am Genma Shirenri. I like being like a Nara, being lazy in swords. I don't like arrogance and stuck up people. I guess if I had a dream, it would be to settle down with a nice lady. The Saban chewing Jonin pondered. Okay, I guess I am next. Naruto said. I am Naruto Uzumaki. I like ramen, training, and learning new jutsu. I dislike pricks, assholes, and people who judge others before they get to know them. Oh, and the time it takes for ramen to cook. My hobbies are my likes and my dream I don't know anymore. Naruto shrugged. What, you don't want to be Hokage? Asked Genma. Well, when I went to that council meeting the other day, I could tell that the hatred runs deep in this village and they won't allow me to be Hokage no matter what. Besides, I thought being the Hokage was something other than staying in a room all day doing paperwork. Though I am surprised the Hokage has not used shadow clones to do it for him. The Hokage was watching this from his crystal ball and began to bang his head on the desk. Stupid, 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 he yelled while his secretary just thought he was having a senior moment. Back with Naruto, we see they have finished and as they were leaving, Hate noticed that Naruto's swords were glowing and then the boy passed out. He quickly catched the boy inside. I'll take him home. Something tells me this has something to do with his bloodline. The other two nodded as Hei took Naruto home. Naruto's mindscape. The blonde opened his eyes to see not a sewer like most expected, but rocky waste land with a dark-looking castle off to the side. Okay this is new. Where am I? You are in your mindscape, boy. Said a booming voice as an orangish gant of a man appeared and the blonde noticed he was on a pedestal of sorts. So he was somewhat eye level with this giant man. Off to the side he saw another man in a black cloak and he looked to be floating in midair. Okay, the last time I was pulled into my mind, I had a giant fox in here. Now I have two guys I have no clue about and the landscape has changed. Naruto said, a little annoyed. Well Naruto-kun, we are you sword spirits you know, part of your bloodline. The cloak wearing man said. The man then took off his hood to reveal a head full of long silver hair. You may not be able to hear our names yet but you are still young but I will tell you mine anyway. It is Zemnes, Zemnes Hakul. Naruto said, Since you were able to hear his name, I will tell you mine. I am the Titan. I was Zeus's father. The big man said, Who? Naruto asked I could not even hear your name. The man grumbled but Zemnes began to talk again. You have two very power swords, don't let it go to your head. You should go now it is morning. Two weeks later, deranked missions that were what they had been doing when they were not training. It sucked so much that this time they were going to make sure they got at least a C-ranked mission. As they walked in, the Hokage smiled and said, Another completes mission, good. Now I have some more missions for you and one of them is Tora again. No. Can we please do a C-rank please? Naruto pleaded on his knees. Well, since you have only one genin on the team, you have done the required amount of missions, so I guess you could. I will send Team 10 with you as backup. Your senseis could take of a higher mission while you are gone. Thank you. The four of them yelled. They truly hated D-Ranks. Team 10 came in just in time to hear that. Troublesome what is going on? Ah, just the team I need. 
I am sending you and Naruto on a C-ranked mission. Okay then where is it? Asked Asuma. While Ino was muttering about having another idiot on the team. I am sending you on a mission to a small village in the east. The Hokage started. They have been attacked recently by very odd creatures. Asuma raised an eyebrow at that. You mean those weird creatures that eat people's souls? The very same. The only reason I am sending you on this mission is because of Naruto. I think he has the means of destroying these creatures well from what I have been told of his odd sword bloodline anyway. So what do these things look like? Ino asked. They are large dark creatures of various shapes and sizes, but they all have something in common a bone mass that hides their true selves. They all meet at the gates after they got ready for the mission, and were just seen leaving. So sensei, what are these things even called and why do they exist? Choji asked while munching on his chips. To tell you the truth, I am not sure. I only know of them because I had to kill a few that went after the Fire Lord always claiming they wanted vengeance. Weird. Ino commented. Naruto panted a scroll that he had gotten at his house a few days ago. Flashback. The blonde opened the door to his house after a long day of training to find what looked to be a ghost of some sort. H. Please do not be afraid. I was sent by the king of Shinigami. Since you are pretty much his heir, he wants you to eventually find and take over Soul Society. But first, you must know about the past. It said as it handed Naruto a scroll that was black and silver. He looked back at the ghost to see it was gone. He shivered a bit, but went to reading the scroll given to him by the ghost. He read and was surprised to find the existence many things still left within the world. Flashback end. They are called hollows. He said loud enough for them to hear. Troublesome, what are these things and how do you know of them? Naruto smirked as he showed them a black and silver scroll. Because of the mod sword bloodline, I am actually a Shinigami or Soul Reaper. The Shinigami we all know is the king but most are dead because of these hollow that they fought back in the day. Now a hollow is basically a soul of a dead person that has been tainted. They can rip out your soul if they wish and eat it killing you. Great we are going our monsters that can kill us via our soul. Ino shouted. But how is it that you of all people got this info? I guess the king wants me to help him by killing these things and eventually finding a place called Soul Society, a place where a race of soul reapers used to live in normal souls after death. Wait, how do we kill these things and what happens to our souls after death? Choji asked, a little freaked out by this. They have a mask that protects their face for a reason. Slice the mask open and it was die well that is what the scroll said. Naruto replied. For the souls, they either get picked up by the Shinigami to live somewhere but if he doesn't, you roam the earth till he does or you get eaten by the hollows and or turn into one. Troublesome. That does not sound that great I hope I don't die soon. Choji gulped. Don't worry I am sure it is just a few weak ones. Asuma commented and Naruto hoped he was right. A few hours later, we find our team in front of a small village where the people looked very freaked out. While they walked through town, they saw large footprints in the ground that looked to be a day old and Ino shuddered at what this thing could look like. She then looked at Naruto and wondered how he had changed so much. In the academy, he was a dead last. But on the way here, he seemed stronger than Sasuke ever was and a lot smarter too. The brought up a thought as to why she liked the Uchiha. She could really think of a reason she and the other girls liked because he was an Uchiha. She shook her head that S never even talked to anyone other than to put someone down. That was when she decided to be a real ninja. She would help her teammates and get stronger God knows she needs it. She also wondered if she was gaining a crush on the blonde like Hinata has. She shook her head. She would worry about that after the mission was over. They headed to the town center to see an old man waiting for them near a fountain. He looked up at them from his sitting position and cried, I am so glad you ninja have come. I am not sure how much more my people could take these weird attacks. I trust you know how to get rid of these things. The old man said, Yes, Naruto here has a unique bloodline that helps him see the tainted spirits, and he has the ability to kill them. Asuma said in a business-like manner, Oh, thank God. Some of my people have been able to see them, and they were scared shitless. One of them was not as he was a former ninja and he tried to kill them. He succeeded, but that brought the wrath of the other on him, and he died and somehow, another one popped up. I do have someone who said they saw his soul and those creatures ganged up on it, and he turned into one of them. The old man was panicking as he said this. Don't worry. My sword will purify him and send him to the Shinigami. That it what my swords can do. You see, these creatures, hollows, are tainted old and they taint other souls by eating them and leaving their negative energy behind. You saw the result. Naruto explained. I see. Now I will leave you to it. These creatures come out at night, so feel free to do what you want till then. How will we know when they are here? Asked Shikamaru. 
Oh, trust me, young one, you will know. The one man said as he walked away. Asuma chuckled as Shikamura muttered a troublesome and sat down on the fountain. Okay, I want you all to ask around the village to who has been targeted and such. Return here at dusk. I don't want us to be separated what it all goes down. The four genin nodded and ran off while Asuma lit a cancer stick. Why am I getting a bad feeling about this? Dusk. They watched the sun go down and Ino that that Naruto was glowing in the odd light. She shook her head, getting those thoughts out of her head. Shikamura saw this, muttering something about troublesome blondes as he rolled his eyes. Soon, the SN was finally gone, and it was nighttime. They waited for an hour and nothing happened. Okay this is so Ino began but was cut off by an unearthly roar shredding the night's silence. Oh no I think they are here. Choji said as he got ready to fight. They looked around them to see that these hollows had surrounded them on the buildings. Well well well. Looks like we got ninja to try and kill us. Said a bird like hollow. As if the last idiot was not enough, they send more in. I will enjoy kill them them. A lizard like one said. Oh but let's leave that cute one for last I want to hear her scream as I devour her soul. A lion like one chuckled. Oh you are such a pervert. A feline like hollow screeched. Besides, they look weak as they are only a genin team and that fat one looks so yummy. Wrong thing to stay as all the hollows felt killer intent from the fat one. I am not fat. I am big boned you skinny bitch. He yelled as he expanded his arms and leg to stomp on the shocked cat-like creature. He was able to crack the mask so the cat-like hollow was actually killed by that attack. Holy crap, that guy killed her like it was nothing. Squawked the bird hollow. We're not done yet. Naruto shouted as he rushed the lion-like hollow creating shadow clones to confuse it. He was going to use an attack that hate taught him. Flashback. Okay cough Naruto. I am going to teach you one of my best sword techniques. It is called, Dance of the Crescent Moon. Hate said as he then had a coughing fit. Cool. How do I do it? Naruto asked after hate was done with his episode. Cough for you. It would be better if you had used shadow clones confuse the enemy until you are able to get in close to do that attack. Now let's begin. Cough. Right. Flashback end. Yeah, just gotta confuse this thing and get in close. Hopefully this thing is not as smart as Hyatt Sensei is. He thought this because it could get ugly if he messed up. So while it was confused, he got in real close and jumped up. Dance of the Crescent Moon. He announced as he arc upward ANS slashed down on the surprised monster, and its mask was cut in two. Asum saw this after he got rid of the lizard-like hollow with his trench knives. So he learned that how nice. He looked to his other student to see that Shikamura had caught the bird-like hollow with his shadow and Choji rolled all over it with his meat tank attack. It stood no chance. He frowned at this. It was just too easy. Everyone's eyes widened when they heard Ino scream and saw that she was being head in midair by a huge hollow that looked like an ape. Foolish whelps they were weak anyway. Now I will devour the girl just as soon as I rip her soul out. It he yelled as he slammed Ino down on the ground to knock her out. They then saw her soul being ripped out, and she was awake and screaming because he was about to be devoured by this hollow, and she had a chain connected O chest that lead to her real body. It was a good thing that it was not broken or she would have been screwed. Let me go. No, I have had some run-ins with your clan. A clan that can project their souls to another human. Oh, just delicious souls. I hope yours is good as well, little girl. It chuckled as it slowly moved her to its mouth. I don't think so. Naruto yelled as he rushed up, slice up its hand and got Ino away before it had a chance to get her back. He set her by the team and said, Keep her safe and her body. I will deal with this thing. Are you sure? Asuma asked. Yeah, just don't get killed. With that, the blonde rushed off as Shikamura muttered a troublesome. He is going to himself killed. He said in a bored manner. He knew none of them could take that on while well, maybe Asuma could but what could Naruto do? As the blonde ran back to the creature, he thought of another attack he could use. He just hoped Yugao doesn't kill him for it. Flashback. Naruto, I am going to teach you an attack that I created. It is called Cats Out of the Bag. Yugao said with a smile. Right, so how does it work? The blonde asked. I will show you. Yugao said as she disappeared. Every now and then, he saw the dirt pick up in odd places. Then she was behind him. Her sword to his neck. This is a stealth attack and can be deadly to your enemy. Never use this against a fellow leaf shinobi and try not to use this unless it is a life-threatening situation. Okay. Naruto said this must be some attack then. But first, we need to get your evasion and speed up, so that I s why I brought my friend Anko to help out. The long purple-haired woman said as the snake lady appeared. That is right, now dodge. H. 
Naruto yelled as he dodged from her snake-like attacks. You are insane, thank you, H. Not the balls. Flashback and, cats out of the bag. The blonde yelled and pretty much disappeared from sight, which made Asuma raise an eyebrow at that. So Yugao taught him that attack too that boy is full of surprises the chain smoker said. Okay what is it supposed to do? Shikamaru asked, you'll see. See they did as the monster was starting to yell for the blonde. The hell are you, everywhere. Naruto's voice came and the monster was slashed in many different places. It roared and swung a giant arm to make several poofs of smoke appear. Naruto reappeared and ran up the hollow's arm and stabbed it in the shoulder. Pathetic soul reaper wannabe. You can't kill me. You're just not powerful enough but I have more than enough power to kill you. Heh, I have lived a long time and I know what most hollows don't. Now get off of me. It yelled as it ripped Naruto off itself and threw him into a building. Now die. Siro. It yelled as a blast of spirit energy was shot towards the blonde. Naruto saw this coming with dinner plate eyes. Damn I don't know many spirit attacks yet. No matter, I got a physical attack for it. He murmured as he started charging physical energy to his hands. Konoha, a green blast of energy shot out of Naruto's hands and hit the Siro head on in the center, creating a ball of pure chakra. This is insane. Ino yelled in her spirit form to her team amps. You summon that right troublesome blonde. Shikamaru replied as he and the other braced themselves as the attacks were creating shockwaves. And this is Naruto's bloodline? thought Asuma. Damn I can't keep this up. Naruto said to himself. Use my power then the voice of Zemnas echoed in his head. Right. Naruto yelled as he overcharged his attack, overpowering the Siro and disintegrating the hollow's arm as it tried to get away. Come from the void of nothingness, Zemnas. The shinobi were confused as hell at what that could mean but the hollow was freaking out. Holy shit. He is not a wannabe. H.E.I.S. 1. In a flash of light. Naruto appeared with a seven-foot blade. It was not any blade no way. It was a huge buster blade that had four cannon-like attachments on the hilt of the blade. It was the cannon blade. Time for you to die. Nothing wave. Naruto yelled as he ran up the building and jumped off so he was above the hollow. He pointed the blade downward and a blast of pure spirit energy incinerated the mask and all. As he landed, the blade turned back to normal. He walked over to Team 10 and saw they had looks of awe on their faces. Wow Naruto. That was awesome. Now can you please help me? Ino pleaded. Well, since you are out of your body you are technically dead. Ino and her teammates' eyes widened. But since your chain of fate is still intact all you have to do is walk back into your body. Ino's sweat dropped at the simple answer as she walked back into her body and cheered about still being alive. While Shikamaru muttered something about troublesome blondes while Choji happily ate some chips. Asuma just shook his head. This report was going to be a pain in the ass. Naruto started to sway on his feet and said, well, I somehow knew this was going to happen. He then passed out. Team 10 rushed over to help the blonde Shinigami. After finally getting back to Konoha, they reported to the Hokage that the mission had turned into at least a B rank. The Hokage agreed after reading the report his son had given him. These hollows were nothing to be messed with. They were in fact very dangerous. Naruto noticed that Ino had been nicer to him than she was in the academy. One day, it clicked that she had a crush on him and it seemed that when he backed back, so did Hinata. He sweat dropped at that, it seemed that he was gaining a fan club. It seemed nice, but he just hoped it did not get out of hand like it did with Sasuke. After all that, he went back to his teachers and learned a few more sword attacks. They even told him that it would be good to learn how to use another type of weapon and choose some odd weapon that was a chain that was attached to a dagger of sorts. After about two weeks of trying to get the hand of it, he had become pretty proficient with it. He also decided to learn all about seals so if he ever need to use one or help someone out with it, well, he would be able to do so. Now, two months later he had become stronger in the ninja art, but is still mediocre with his shinigami arts. He could not for the life of him, gain the name of that titan. That and the scroll that he had bought had a few attacks, like a white lightning attack. It was awesome in his eyes. At the moment, he was eating ramen like there was no tomorrow at his favorite ramen stand. The old man could not help but chuckle madly as Naruto was eating more food today than usual because he was in an eating contest with Choji. Him and Team Ten hung out more after their mission and the blonde found that Shikamaru loved to play a game called Shogi. So he tired it. He lost horribly in the beginning, but got a little better each time he played with the lazy Nara. Since Naruto was hanging out with the boys, he would help out Ino when she trained or kept her company at her family's store, to which she loved since it got boring at times. So after eating this last bowl he fell out his chair dramatically and said, 
man I can't eat anymore. Choji actually did the same and said, you win this time Naruto arc. The large boy said as he held his stomach in pain, yeah, that was 60 bulls to 58 bulls I honestly thought you were going to win. Naruto said as he slowly got up and paid for his bulls while Choji did the same. They shook hand and were about to go when Kiba and Shino appeared. Naruto, the Hokage needs us. Kiba said, a little miffed about why they needed Naruto. Shino knew but he, like usual, said nothing. Right. Naruto said as he followed the two boys to the Hokage Tower. But the Hokage called him back for some reason. Hokage Tower, good to see that you found him. The old Hokage said with a smile. Wasn't hard, the idiot was gorging himself with Choji. Kida replied. The dog boy was curious as to who the guy in the corner was. It was a ramen eating contest Kiba. Naruto said with a twitch in his eye. Yes well, I have a mission for you all. The old man cut in before a fight broke out. Huh, then where is Hinata? Naruto asked, curious as why Hinata would not be on this mission as well. He is sick in the hospital. Some jackass poisoned her during our first C-rank mission. Kiba growled. Unfortunate, but we have another mission, and this must be a high-ranking one to have you on the team. Shino reasoned. Before Kiba could say anything, the Hokage spoke again, correct Shino, Naruto's last mission with Team 10 turned out to be a B-rank. Naruto was the one to take out the leader of those creatures you were supposed to have learned about in the Academy of the Hollows. Kiba's eyes widened and he looked to Naruto and could not help but smirk. So, he is the strongest genin I have to spare for this mission. This will be a C-rank escort mission but could turn into a B-rank if those creatures decide to attack. Sounds like a plan. Who are we guarding? Asked Naruto. Me, my name is Shibuki and I am the leader of Taki. The man in the counter said as he decided to speak. So meet me at the gates in one hour. The man then left. Saratobi sighed and said might as well get ready. They nodded and left. Naruto got ready in 15 minutes and decided to do something nice. So he went to the flower shop and since he knew more about flowers since he helped out there with Eno, he got some get well soon flowers. Eno noticed this and asked, so, who are those flowers for Naruto? Oh, I just heard that Hinata was sick in the hospital. So I decided to be nice get these. Eno smiled as he paid for the flowers and walked out. Hinata better get him soon or else me or someone else will. Any girl would be lucky to get him. Hospital. Naruto found the room for Hinata and noticed that she was asleep. He smiled and he had to be quick about this since he need to get back to the gates. He looked at her and thought, why does she like me? He quickly shook it off and placed the flowers on the table next to her, and a note. He then leapt out the window. Hinata woke up just as he left and noticed the flowers. She instantly thought they were from Kiba and rolled her eyes, but she had to be nice so she picked up the note and her eyes widened. Heard you got hurt get well soon Hinata-chan. Naruto. She instantly fainted after that with a big smile on her face. The gates. Naruto arrived just as Karinai appeared and they set off without a word. Kiba had gained a respect for Naruto after Shino told him about Naruto's mission. The silent boy somehow heard the story from another shinobi who was talking about the mission. That ninja was freaking out about hollows that were not supposed to be around anymore at least to their knowledge anyway. When they finally got the a huge waterfall with some kids nearby. They were relieved because this so-called leader was chicken as he got scared over stupid things like a bird flying away. It was rather annoying. Whoa! Now that's what I call a waterfall. Naruto shouted while Kiba smirked. Yes, quite impressive, isn't it? Karen I said with a smile. I take it we have arrived. Shino stated. As they walked around the edge of the waterfall, they noticed all the trash in the water. Before Naruto or Kiba could say anything about it, they heard the voice of a little girl. Lord Shibuki. Shibuki chuckled and said, Now now, keep your distance. Show a little respect for your village leader. The kids just gave him a sad look. I'm sorry I don't have time to play with you right now, but that is not why we are here. The little boy said. We are supposed to clean up the trash by the shore. Mother's making us pick up every piece. The little girl said. I see. Shibuki said as then turned to his escorts with a smile and said, Well look, I brought you some help. These ninja have come from the Hidden Leaf Village. Naruto and Kiba started to protest but Shibuki ignored them and said, we will pay you for your time. Kiba complained but the kids came up to Naruto and said their thanks because the current was a little strong. Karinai smiled and said that it was a good idea. While they did the dirty work of cleaning up the waters, Karinai and Shibuki were talking about rumors of rogue ninjas and such. That did not sit well with the village leader. They would be after the hero's water or her. I won't let them get either of them. The water is scared to my village, and she is my half-sister, 
as he thought that he was caught off guard by a messenger bird that had a note for Karinai. She was needed back in the village so she left and told the team to follow her when they were fin shed. Kiba made some comments that the others could leave while he did the rest and somehow mocked Shibuki. That got the kids mad and they pushed him away, which a bad thing for Dog Boy as he stepped in some dog shit. Naruto could not help but laugh his ass off at that. After a bit, they were done and Naruto was complaining about being hungry. Shibuki would not have any of that and told them to go home. Shino nodded and started walking only to stop as the girl shrieked as her mother came stumbling toward them with a kunai in her back. She told them that they had been attacked. Naruto then told Shino to take the kids and their mother to a safe place while he, Kiba, and Shibuki were to go inside the village to save them. Shibuki was reluctant at first but he needed help in with this, since he was not strong enough. But before anything could be done, some shinobi came out of the waterfall and attacked them. Kiba smirked as he and Akamaru took them out with his piercing fanjutsu. It was pretty easy in his eyes. Hey, looks like we got a new mission. Three in a row, now let's get in there. Naruto said as he turned to Shibuki. Show us the way, man. Let me make one thing clear. Don't reveal the secret location to anyone. I promise. Naruto said as they entered the cave behind the waterfall. Shibuki then jumped into a small puddle and didn't surface. Okay, I guess that is the entrance. You think let's go and kick some ass? Kiba yelled as he jumped in and Naruto followed right after. That small puddle turned out to be an underwater pathway. Once inside, they saw a small village under a giant tree. It was impressive to say the least. The only problem was that there was one even out. It looked like a dead town. They never noticed Shibuki was gone and when Kiba noticed this, he pushed Naruto back into the water while he had Akamaru dealt with some ninja that attacked. Naruto never knew that the dog duo got captured like their friend Shino. Naruto didn't know where the waterfall leader even went, so he went with his guts and swam to the big tree in the middle. In the large roots of the tree, Naruto saw Shibuki swim to some island within the tree. The guy went to a cabinet of some sort and pulled out a small vial of water. He wondered if that was the hero's water. He followed the leader to the hole in the tree where they saw Kiba and Shino all tied up with the rest of the villagers. No, what? asked Naruto as he jumped down out of nowhere scaring the crap out of Shibuki. Don't do that. The leader hissed out. Anyway, I can't believe my old teacher is the one leading the attack. By the way, how did you get here? I followed my gut to find you so I poked around the roots of this giant tree. Now who is that nut job? Suayan my old teacher. He is their leader he is probably here of this the hero's water. Hey Shibuki. I know you're here. Don't be shy. Come on out right now and bring the hero's water with you, the man said. Naruto noticed that Shibuki was shaking all over the place. He must be very scared of this guy. Don't make this village suffer anymore because of you. Okay what is so great about that jug of water that he wants? Asked Naruto. This water is only drawn from the trunk of the tree every 100 years. It allows the one who drinks it have 10 times their normal chakra. But at a price, it shortens their lifespan. It could make one as strong as your Hokage. Shibuki said as he explained to Naruto what happened in the last war, and its affects on those who drink the guy's father drunk it, and he died. Shibuki called him a fool for doing so. No, you're the fool. He died to protect you and the village. He is okay in my books. Naruto said as he went to the hole in the tree to see that the old guy was going to kill a kid. I don't know why you think it is useless but I am going to kick his ass even if I have to die. With that, Naruto jumped out the hole to find a good way to attack. Just as the old man was going to kill the little girl, Naruto made his presence known. Hey! Naruto Uzumaki is here. It is about time you idiot! Kiba yelled from his hanging spot. Yeah yeah? The blonde commented as he took a vine from the tree and swung down. I am going to kick your he didn't get to say much else as the vine broke and he belly flopped in the water. Kiba would have face palmed himself if he could while the attacker's sweat dropped. Huh? What was that? Asked the guy with wild white hair and green face paint. Just an idiot. Kiba grumbled. He tough luck kid. Said a masked man. He who's playing? Naruto said as he surfaced only to smirk and poof away as the real Naruto rushed out of the water. Pushed the little girl away because the man thought it was time for her to die Naruto got stabbed in the back. The blonde played dead till they were upon him. He sprung up and attacked the masked man. While the two of them were fighting, the old dude picked up the little girl, muttering about trying this again. Soon, after some more fight and talking, Shibuki finally came down to fight. It seemed the guy drank some of the water because he fought with a lot of power. Of course that was not enough because of the older man's experience. That is when Naruto stepped back in the fight. 
He did his best but Suyin drank the water as well and was now fast and power hungry. Drinking that water was bad because it attracted attention of an unwanted a guest. Sure power you have more power than before and it is delicious. A dark voice echoed as a giant creature with a white mask jumped on the water. Damn a hollow. Naruto growled out. This was not just any hollow. It was a Minos. The mac on this thing was that of a horn beetle. What the hell? Shouted Suyin as the hollow came up to him and the chakra overtook the hollow and fused the two freaks together, making the hollow stronger. Heh, seems I got more power time to die kid. No I don't think so Naruto said as he took his sword out and called out, come from the void of nothingness, Zemness. The blade turned into its blade form and before the hollow could even move, Naruto called, Vortex Wave. A vortex of pure wind energy charged toward the freakish hollow and tore off its left arm. Before the hollow could recover, Naruto was on him and sent the blade right into its face, leapt over and brought the blade down, slicing the creature in half. Don't mess with me. Naruto said as the creature disappeared to leaving a dead Suyin in its place. A few hours later, well I am glad to be getting out of this village. Kiba said a little annoyed. Shino just nodded to that sentiment. Well I will see you back in Konoha then, I have a mission from the Hokage I have to take. Naruto said, yeah yeah see you then. Kiba waved off. Search us out when you get back, it would be good for us to train together. Shino replied, you got it. Once the two left, Shibuki, still in his bandages, said if you need to rest for your next mission, I would like it if you stayed here, you saved us after all. It would be the least we could do. I would like that Shibuki. Holy crap. What happened here? Yelled a female voice. Shibuki cringed and Naruto turned around to see a real beauty. She had green hair, pink eyes, a tank top of sorts with a headband on her shoulder like Shikamaru's, a skirt, arm warmers, and tanned skin. The blonde blushed and asked, Who are you? I am Fu Shibuki's half-sister. Oh, so that is what happened. Fu said after she heard what had happened from his brother. Currently they were in Shibuki's office. I knew I should not have gone on that mission. I bet Suyin was waiting for me to leave so he could attack. She scowled at the thought of that man. Yeah well, it couldn't be helped. Shibuki said with a frown and that turned into a smile as he addressed Naruto next. So, you have another mission to be done does it have to be done right away? Well no, I just got to go to Suna soon for some reason. Naruto said, not really telling them the mission details. I see, well in a few days, the village is holding a festival and I would like you to be the guest of honor. Shibuki said while Fu looked at him oddly. What do I have to do? Asked Naruto curiously. Well, since this is the hundredth year festival, you get to get the water from the tree and take one sip. Shibuki stated. And you want me to do that? Yes, with Fu as your date. Shibuki just gave an innocent smile at their shocked faces. He could tell that Fu highly respected Naruto after he told her what happened, and it seemed that Naruto had gained a bit of a crush on the girl. Fu was a little shaken at this and glared at her brother. He knew what she was getting on about, and gave a slight nod as he knew he would have to tell Naruto. The smile disappeared and he gave Naruto an evil big brother glare. But I must tell you one thing and if you hurt her I will hurt you back. Okay Naruto said, a little freaked. My sister Fu is special to me and this village in the sense that she is the demon container for the seven-tailed horn beetle. The village leader said in all seriousness. Fu looked at Naruto for any signs of ill intent and found none of that. Instead she found a sad smile not what she expected. Glad to see I was not alone in that. That comment shocked the sibling. What do you mean was? Shibuki asked. Think about it. I am from Konoha. I had the QB in me but it unlocked my bloodlines for me and well it died. Its extra chakra turned into these swords. Naruto said while showing them the blades. For Fu this was a shocker and her bijou was not helping any. The hell. The QB is not that charitable unless. Those swords could they be the sword of the Shinigami? The hell are you babbling about? That boy is last of the old Shinigami. He must be the one the king of Shinigami talked about all those years ago if that is true then the time of the bijou is at an end okay. While Fu was having an internal conversation, Shibuki said, that is great. I thought this was going to be a problem, but it won't. Yeah, but are you sure you want me to do this? Yes. You saved the village. The leader stated, all right then. Naruto replied, so Fu, would you like to go to the festival with me? Naruto's voice brought Fu away from the bijou in her mind and she smiled with a small blush. Sure. I would like that. Fu then ran out of the room to go get ready. Shibuki chuckled at this. Hey, let's hope this works out for her. Yeah, I have a question. Ask away. What do I do on a date? Naruto asked as Shibuki and his hidden ANBU all face vaulted. 
This is going to a long two days, the village leader thought with dismay. Two days later, after Naruto helped out with setting up the festival, learning his part, and learning what to do on date, the blonde was ready to go. Shibuki gave Naruto a nice suit to wear. It was a white tuxedo, and it attracted a lot of attention on his way to meet Fu in the park. When he reached the park, he saw Fu and he felt like he could not breathe. Fu was was wearing a long green dress that had white stripes running down it. It matched her hair very well. He though she looked beautiful in his eyes. Wow, you look beautiful. Naruto said as he walked up to her. It got the desired effect as she blushed bright red and said, Thank you Naruto, you look very handsome in that suit. Naruto smiled as he then lead her through the festival, winning her stuffed animals from the various game stands and their ways. Ironically, most of the prizes they won were foxes or odd cartoon bugs. Soon they made it to an outdoor restaurant and sat down to eat. After ordering their food, Naruto decided to speak his mind. Fu I need to ask you something. Yes, what is it? Well, in the few months that I have been a genin, I have done a lot of research and sealing work. There is a group out there that is known as Akatsuki that wants the demons that people like us hold. I want to know if you want to form our own little group as I find the other demon containers. Fu blinked and said that is a good idea and I have heard of this Akatsuki from traveling merchants. Both good and bad stories are what I hear. So, what do you know of seals that could help us? Naruto smirked and said two seals so far. The first one is where I could butt on you and we could communicate over long distances, and we can keep track of each other. It could be our organization's symbol I guess you could say. The second seal is something else I can put on you and it slowly turned you bijou into a sword like mine and converts the chakra into spirit energy. Wow sounds pretty good, but we should tell Shibuki later about this. Fu suggested. Other than that, I think it is the best idea to use against those that want to harm us. Naruto smiled and after an hour or so, we see our favorite couple near the lake, where they see Ninja dancing on the water to a slow song. He smiled and held out his hand. Would you like to dance? Yes, yes I would, Fu said with a blush. As they stepped out onto the water, it seemed that time seemed to just stop for them as they danced the night away. Shibuki, who was dancing with his girlfriend, smirked at them from his spot. His sister needed someone, and he hoped it was Naruto. Fu looked into Naruto ocean-like eyes and felt herself getting pulled into them. They were just so alluring to her. Naruto felt the same why about her eyes as he too leaned in. They met in the middle with a soft and passionate kiss. Ah, my larva is making the transition into adulthood. I am so proud. The seven-tailed bug in Fu's head cried out, ruining the moment for her. Shut it. I am I trying to enjoy this. When they pulled back, Naruto spoke his mind, wow, that was great, yep. Fu whispered as she leaned in for another kiss, either of them noticing the fireworks going off in the distance because they were dealing with the ones in the kiss. Shibuki and his girlfriend watched this with happy smiles. Way to go Naruto you made her happy. He said as he leaned in to kiss his own girl. Midnight, Naruto and Fu stood on the stage next to the big tree where they will extract the hero's water. He did just as Shibuki and Fu taught him and channeled his chakra into a spot on the tree and guiding it with his chakra into the small jug that it was carried in. After he was done, Shibuki nodded to Fu and she gave Naruto a small amount of the water and then jumped away. The blonde was confused at first but he soon understood why as he already massive chakra grew bigger and was swirling around him. Normally if someone drank the water their lifespan would shorten but if they drank it right after they extracted it, they get the chakra from the tree itself and expand their lifespan by a few years. Though nobody expected this result as his eyes turned into the Yuzigan, and he held his head in pain before tree root grew around him, and then shot upward. The green energy shot down on the blonde and then everything went back to normal. Naruto fell on his hands and knees, panting. Fu rushed to his side and asked, Are you okay? Yeah, but it seems that I just absorbed the power of a true Mokutan user well that it was my eyes tell me. Who was the true Mokutan user? Shibuki asked. The one who taught the Shodiam Hokage and created the tree. But his name has been lost to the tree in history. Naruto said as he slowly got back up and smiled at Fu. The next day at the waterfall. Like I said I am glad you started this organization and helped my sister. Now if you get banished like you said you would because of the idiot council and the elders, you are to back here first before you go find that soul society place. The leader of the hidden waterfall village said to their hero. You got it, and I will be back to visit when I get the chance. Naruto said as Fu walked up to him and gave him a passionate kiss. I will miss you. Naruto said as he hugged her. So will I, but duty calls. Fu smiled as she melted into the hug and reluctantly let go. As he was leaving, Shibuki has an idea and smiled. Like you, he is still a genin. So you'll be seeing him soon. I hope so. 
Fu replied as she watched Naruto's retreating from Naruto's side as he walking through the desert to the sand village. Getting will be simple my ass. Naruto ranted as he took out the map and growling. Yeah, thanks for the map grandpa the desert looks the same from all directions. He yelled to the heavens. So, as he continued, a few ninja appeared in front of him. He looked at them for a good few seconds before he was the headbands and smiled. The leader smirked and said, Well kid, I can't believe the Hokage sent you to help us with our problem you were in that genjutsu for hours. The others just chuckled at his. Naruto's eye twitched before he exploded, genjutsu. I fucking suck at genjutsu damn it. Yeah I kinda figured that out, but I though the Hokage said you could dispel them pretty easily. The leader of the group said with a raised eyebrow. Yeah well I'm not that great at detect them but he is right. Naruto then smirked and activated his use again, shocking the ninja and the genjutsu was blown apart to show that he was at the front gates of the sand village. Oh come on, I was in front of this place the whole time. He yelled, very pissed off as the guards fell on the sand ground, laughing their asses off. Hey well it does not matter anymore, we were just toying with you with a genjutsu that was beyond you level. I hate you. Naruto said as he deactivated his use again and started walking with the ninja to the Kazakage tower in the middle of the village. The man chuckled as he led him through the village till they got to the Kazakage's office. Once there, the veiled Kage looked up and zeroed in on the ninja next to Naruto. You should have cancelled the genjutsu after the first hour. Four hours is just annoying. Leave now. The Kage ordered, ticked at his prankster ninja. When the man left, the Kage of sand spoke to Naruto. I am sorry young Naruto, but I guess it was just his prankster side kicking in. Hey, then he will have to watch out for he messed with Kanoha's king of pranksters. Naruto declared with his fist in the air. Ah shit the Kage thought with a deadpan expression. Anyway, the reason I called for one of Kanoha's ninja was because of my son. His team recently went to some ancient runes that I wanted checked out. They found something as it took over Gara and almost killed my other son Kankuro. Tamari thankfully got them out of there and returned and now here you are. You also have to know that my son Gara is the demon container for the Shikaku. He explained. Naruto blinked once, and then twice before saying. You made your own son a demon container? Yes and I do regret do thing because I lost my wife that day. He was a problem child for me because Shikaku tries take over my son when he is asleep. He is always angry and kills people to prove his existence, and I cannot take it anymore. I tired to have his killed on numerous occasions but it does not work. Each time I am doing this I am truly ripping apart my family. By the end of the speech, Naruto was pissed, but he knew not to anger a foreign kage. That sounds a bit odd I read somewhere the Shikaku was somewhat nice, not a total nut job. The Kage's eyes widened at this and said with a thoughtful look, I wonder if the spirit of that priest is that cause of this. The what? Yes, the second Kazakage, after the death of the first demon container, wanted to make his next one even stronger so he fused the Shikaku with the soul of the priest of the Wind Temple who went crazy and killed half the monks there before he was killed. No offense, but he was a complete dumbass. Naruto said bluntly. Fusing a demi hollow with a demon is bad news. Tell you want, I will get rid of the priest for you and then you will have your son back. I do have a request though. The Kazakage's eyes widened and said name it, being the former demon container of the QB. I'm making a little group that will consist of the other demon container so that we could protect ourselves from those who will to do us harm like this Akatsuki I heard about. Former. Shouldn't you be dead? QB unlocked my bloodlines and that killed it, so I am not dead not yet anyway. Fine. But who else is in this group so far? Oh, my girlfriend Fu, who is the container for the seven-tailed horn beetle. Naruto said nonchalantly while the Kazakage and the hidden ANBU sweat dropped. So, where am I going going? You will be going to those runes I talked about. You will be joining my daughter and helping my son. I expect you to fulfill about what you said about my son. I want him back, alive. Will do, sir. Good, now go, my daughter should be at the gates. The Kage of San said and Naruto nodded and left. A truly interesting boy. When the blonde reached the gates, he saw the ninja from earlier talking to a blonde-haired girl with four pigtails. I am not going to ask. He thought as he looked the one to many pigtails. So, could I get your name so who I know I will be pranking back? Hey, you call me Jin, and you can't get me back. We'll see about that. I am the king of pranksters in Kanoha. Naruto yelled out with a fist in the air, to which the blonde-haired girl's sweat dropped. Well, good luck then. Anyway, this is Tamari. She will be the one leading you to the runes, Jin said and chuckled. Hopefully with her around, you won't get lost or run into a random genjutsu. Naruto fell anime style and said I really hate you. Are you two about done? Tamari asked with annoyance. Yes. 
Jin said with a smile as he walked away with a smirk. Naruto looked at him oddly before following Tamari into the desert. Two hours later at the runes. So, let me get this straight. Gar found some old talisman and put it in a hole and the madness started? Yes, this army of sand appeared and if what you said is true, then the priest has taken over my little brother. Great Naruto said sarcastically as they walked the runes. Large buildings were not half caved in and a dead looking tower in the center of it all. Well, let's get this over with. Naruto said. Tamari nodded and they ran up the tower. Once on top, they had dinner plate eyes. Why? Well, there was a sandstorm brewing all round them. Gara was to the side knocked out, and there was a man in priest robes standing there waiting for them. I see you have returned young sand maiden and with a friend. Do you really think you can bet me? He said smirking at them. Give back my brother. Tamari pleaded. You can have the whelp, he is weak. Sneered the priest. You're the one who is weak Naruto said simply. Insolent boy but you know, I was not going to give you the boy. I was just going to kill you and him, but I have a better idea. He priest laughed. Get back to me to top of this tower without the use of chakra and I will give you a fighting chance. He smirked evilly and before either or if the two blondes could respond, the sandstorm swirled around them and when they could see clearly again, they were at the entrance to the tower once again. The hell! Tamari yelled to the sky. Naruto scowled. I never saw that coming. No matter, let's move. Naruto said but before they could enter, the sand around them shifted before turning into a small army of sand soldiers. No! Tamari growled out. She was at a disadvantage because most of her attacks needed chakra to use her wind jutsu. Naruto smiled and said, well, guess I should try this now. Tamari get behind that broken pillar. I will be using a destructive attack. Tamari, not wanting to argue at the moment nodded and left the attacking to her partner. Naruto then smirked to his enemies. Hey, I may not be able to use chakra at the moment, but that does not mean I can't use spirit energy. He yelled as Tamari looked at him oddly as he took out his dagger and chain. He sent spirit energy into it to make it spin around him. It looked like a snake was slithering around him to the others. The soldiers looked at him blankly before charging at him and Naruto called out, spiraling silver winds. The dagger and chain started to spin really fast around around him, creating silver-like winds and when the soldiers came close, they were obliterated. When all was said and done, he saw that Tamari was gawking at him. How? Spirit energy. He may have taken our ability to use chakra, but if we split it, we can use it. Say what? Tamari yelled as she ran back up to him. How? Heh, chakra is made up of spiritual energy and physical energy two energies that we have the ability to use like I did. That is pretty awesome. Can you show me because I don't feel like dying in these runes anytime soon? Sure, just feel out you chakra like you usually do and spate them it is very easy Naruto said as he watched her try to do it. Ten minutes later, she was able to get it and tried one of her old attacks. I can't believe it, Tamari said happily. After that, they went into the tower, never noticing a stream of glowing sand trailing after them. After reaching the halfway point, they decided to rest. They had been in there for at least an hour, and the soldiers just would not quit. Well, they were made of sand and sand was all around them after all. I still don't understand this why Gara, and why are you the one to come to help? Tamari asked. Naruto sighed and sat down across from her. I am guessing that Gara got the short end of the stick in the beginning of life. He chose the path that most demon container take the dark path. They don't think their existence is worth anything so they do what they think is right. There are those that are respected and they get to act like normal humans, like those two from Kumo and Fu from Waterfall. Then there is the former demon container of the Kyubi. Most people in Kanoha thought and still thinks he is the reincarnation of the beast and think he is evil. That is not true and he has had the same life as Gara and the others but he chose to take the light. He wants people to see that demon containers are not evil. Tamari stared at the blonde for a few minutes before asking, And who is this you speak of? Me, Naruto Uzumaki. Tamari's eyes widened and said, That is incredible. That would mean you are actually trying to help my brother instead of trying to kill him. Correct, I will save him from that nut job and I won't let you die in these runes. You are my comrade after all. Tamari blushed when Naruto got back up and started walking again. Wow, he is pretty noble and he is really not like the other guys. He has not even looked like me in a perverse way him. After her thoughts drifted off, Naruto was looking around the large room they were in. It would seem they would need to use a lot of acrobatics to get to the next floor. For now though, something caught his eye. It was a door, the only other door in this room. So he cracked it open to find a small room with an altar of some sort in the middle. He walked up to it, and as soon as he touched it, it broke and fell apart. Ah shit. 
he said but he did see a small scroll poking out of the rubble. As soon as he took it, he heard a cracking noise and saw something in the room that Temari was still in. Slots for razor blades slowly rose out of the ground, and what seemed like flamethrowers were showing up along the walls. Timri, he said a little uneasy. Yeah? She said getting out of her thoughts. The flamethrowers were starting up now, and it looked like the part of the room was starting to spin. Get that ass moving, he announced as he jumped to one of the rods to flip to the next room, leading to the top of the room. Tamari was about to retort to the rude comment but froze at the sound of buzz saws and the flamethrowers. She looked around frantically to be free from these things but she was trapped. Suddenly, she was flanked by two of Naruto's spirit clones. Before she could say anything, she was thrown into the air like a slingshot does rocks. Once she was she was close enough to Naruto, the blonde-haired leaf shinobi reached out his hand saying, Like I said, I won't let my comrades die. Temari smiled as she took Naruto's hand and he smiled as well. Then, he threw her upward closer to the exit. She actually screamed as she flew through the air. Naruto didn't think much on it and flipped to a higher rod and then did the same thing again. He thought it was faster this way and he really couldn't help but laugh as Temari screamed on her way up. Once know the next floor, Temari was about to bash Naruto's head in but he felt that this was not over. He looked down the hole they came through and saw that the fire was searing the room it was in and traveling upward. Shit! He quickly ran to his blonde-haired companion to see that she was a little pissed. He knew he would regret this but he tackled her to the ground just as the fire shot out the hole and sky rocketed around them. It swirled around the room before going out. Naruto rolled off of Tamari with a groan. What a drag! H. I am starting to sound like Shikamaru. While Naruto was droning, Tamari was red as a tomato. He saved me twice now what is this feeling? They didn't have time to be screwing around at the moment because the room was starting to fall apart thanks to the fire weakening it. The walls began to fall and the two blonde nodded to each other and began to hop off of the rocks at choice points to get to the top. That was interesting. Naruto panted. True, but don't even get on top of me like that again. Tamari said as she bopped him on the head with a blush on her face. Naruto, clueless as ever, just looked at her like she was nuts. Sorry, I was just trying to protect you from the fire. Naruto said simply. Wow, he is so clueless. Tamari thought with a deadpan expression. Well, if you two are done blabbing, I think you have proven to me that you have some fighting chance against me. A voice said behind them. They turned around to once again see the priest with a sandstorm all around them. Tamari rushed to Gara's side who had woken up but was very weak, so he could not move. So boy, why do you fight against me? Why fight against the dead? The priest yelled. People like you is one of the reasons demon containers are hated and this world is screwed up. I will put an end to you and send you to the king of Shinigami. Ha! King of Shinigami? What stupidity! Like some nobody brat is going to send me anywhere. I am not just a ninja you freak, I am a Shinigami. Naruto announced as he brought out one of his blades and his dagger and chain. You can't beat me boy, for I have the power of sands. The priest yelled out as the sandstorm closed in and claimed him. It began to harden into a terrifying shape. It had molded the priest into the shape of Shikaka's body with a white bone mask for the face. Try and kill me now boy. Inside Gara, the Shikaka was freaking out as it did not want to die but his vessel could not move and this boy wanted to fight that thing. The blonde was more of a nut job than he was in his eyes. Young one, I will give you a power to stop this man. I have seen you actions and deem you worthy take my gift and use it well. A voice echoed out as they all looked around, only to see some glowing sand heading to Naruto's dagger and chain. There was a flash of light, and there were odd runes on the dagger itself. Not one to look a gift horse in the mouth, he accepted it. Naruto then ran forward, calling out his shirkai and whipping out with his dagger and chain. He blasted the sand hollow a few dozen times, but it did not do much because the sand reformed the monster each time. Hell, even parts of the mask he had nicked reformed. Temari and Gara watched as Naruto was flung across the roof and to the edge of the other side. Not even thinking about it. Timri ran after Naruto and caught him right before he was uncatchable. Thanks Tamari. I won't let you die partner. She yelled as she lifted him up. Right, now go protect your brother. I will take care of this guy somehow. Naruto growled as Tamari nodded and ran to her brother. When Naruto looked back at the Shikakified dead priest, the world froze and he was sent to his mind. He looked around to see that Zemnas was looking at his with his arms crossed with the titan of time sighting down on the ground young Naruto you will not be able kill this hollow with my power. You must use the titan of time's power along with the new power of the sands of time you have acquired. All right, I don't know if I am ready to hear his name but I must if I want to save Gara and Tamari. Then you are ready, now hear my name. 
I am, Naruto opened his eyes and called out while replacing the swords. Rule the Titans. Kronos. Naruto's form exploded with power, and everyone was blown back a bit by it. They looked back to see that Naruto's other blade and changed to the of a huge chainsaw blade that when active, sparked electricity. I got a new attack for you you nut job, Naruto yelled as he threw the dagger and chain into the chest of the priest, and it stuck there. Before the nut job holy man could retort, Naruto called out, Time freeze, time froze for the priest only and Naruto smirked as he called out, Eye of the storm. A glowing sandstorm erupted around the two combatants with Naruto as the center of the storm. It created true blades of wind that ripped up the priest's new body. Naruto then charged and brought his new blade down on the priest's head, cutting the nut job in half. The sand siblings saw the weird sandstorm die down and saw Naruto drop down. The blonde looked up to see the priest just standing there for a few seconds before saying, Good job, kid. But you can't stop the sandstorm that will engulf this place and then the rest of the world. The priest then began to disintegrate and disappear into nothingness. Naruto paled and went to the edge of the tower and saw the dark storm coming. He caused and thought, Can't lose here no I won't and I won't lose these tether. I am going to use that seal. Flashback. Naruto, that is quite the seal you made. Just be sure you use it only when necessary. I am labeling that seal as ranked. The Hokage said as he saw the devastation of this one seal that not even the fourth Hokage had thought about. Flashback end. Naruto sighed as he ran to the sand siblings and jumped up, high above them. He sent chakra to his hands, now that he could use it, and called out, seal art, black hole. A pair of seals appeared on Naruto's hands and before the sand siblings could blink, a massive amount of the sand storm launched upwards and was sucked into the tiny seals on Naruto's hands. Naruto growled out in pain as it did hurt because the sand was blasting into the sand on his hands, so he activated his use again. With the combination of the two at work, the sand became attuned to his DNA and in turn, gave him the power over sand like his Mokutan. After that, his struggles stopped and the sandstorm was instantly silenced. As he fell back to the ground after all that stress, he heard Tamari's voice and then his world went back. We find Naruto at the gates of Suna three days after the whole runes incident. Naruto healed in one day but the Kazakage and his family insisted that he stay a bit longer and thanks for bringing their family back together. Tamari was disappointed that Naruto already had a girlfriend but she quickly let it go, not wanting to anger him. But she developed a big crush on him though that did not go unnoticed by the Kazakage. The man did wonder if he could set up a political marriage. He pushed those thoughts till later. The boy had really changed his son and he was glad for it as he no longer had to get his son killed. That lead the two boys to become good friends and even Kankuro opened up to the blonde. Gara had also decided to teach Naruto some sand moves since the blonde now had control over sand like he did. The only difference was that that blonde did not carry a huge jug on his back, just a couple of bottles and seal on his arm that contained a lot of sand. Back to the gates, the group was saying their goodbyes. The Kazakage and Baki, the sand sibling sensei, gave Naruto a scroll on wind and sand jutsu and a special surprise for the blonde later. After hearing about Naruto's unique bloodline, they decided to give TH a blonde something special. Kankuro patted Naruto on the back and thanked him again for all that he did in Gara. still not used to other emotions, just shook hands with Naruto and smiled a little. He saw Naruto as a brother even though they were not related by blood. Tamari was the one that shocked everyone as she walked right up to him and planted a kiss on his lips. That is a thank you for saving my brother. It is truly a shame that you already have a girlfriend I would have claimed you for myself if you didn't. She said with a smile as she saw his face really red that could make Hinata jealous. Naruto shuddered before coughing his hand and saying, Well I'd better go. He then hightailed it out of there, sand being sent in all directions in his wake. Hey now that was funny. Kankuro said that he watched Naruto ran away at top speeds. Brat better watch out, he might have a harem if these girls he is saving come together luck brat. With Naruto that night, Naruto has decided to take the scenic route to Konoha and head to the fire temple to see the sights. The Hokage expected his mission to be a lot long anyway so he had time. Right now though, he was sitting next to a campfire he had made. Looking into the fire, he remembered about the scroll he had got from those runes. So, he quickly took it out and opened. To his surprise, it was a summoning contract for ravens. He had done his research and found out that these guys were helps to the Shinigami. What was weird though was the fact the scroll was in some old runes in the land of sand. Shaking his head, he decided to sign the contract and see what would happen. He found that there was a special set of hand signs for him, and went ahead and did them while sending a good amount of chakra into the jutsu. Summoning jutsu, in a large puff of smoke, a forty-foot raven appeared where he was standing. 
he was now on the bird's beak. Its giant eyes locked onto him and said, You the one who summoned me? The blonde just nodded. I see. Well, you do have the blood of a Shinigami in you, for it you did not. You would have died when you tried the summoning. At this, the blonde soul reaper paled. Normally, summon creatures would have a test for you, but I think I will have no test because of the fact that there has not been a summoner in a very long time. Now, I will give you a familiar to work with you. Oh, by the way, I forget the introductions. The large summon squawked. Oh right, I am Naruto Uzumaki. You may call me Maru. Now, what is it that you desire in life? Well, I know that my time in my home village is short because there are those that want me dead even though I am not a demon container anymore. When that time comes, I wanted to find the entrance to the soul society and restore it. I see, very noble of you. I never thought the day would come when someone would want to find that place. If that is the case, then return to the runes from which you found the summoning scroll, you will find a clue to your desire. Now I will trust you will your familiar, my own daughter. Kira. When he said the name, a poof appeared next to Naruto. A smallish raven was revealed when the smoke was gone. What is it father? We have a new summoner, and you are his familiar. Teach him the shadow and darkness arts when you have the chance. All right. The little raven said as she flew to Naruto's shoulder. Finally, we got a summoner. Maru just chuckled and then in a large puff of smoke, he was gone. The bad thing about Hat was that Naruto was falling from a very high height. Using her quick thinking, the small raven attached herself to Naruto's back and grew to a reasonable size and fused with him, giving him large black wings. What the? This is the power of a familiar. We are partners now, so this is possible. Hen you learn the shadow arts. That is when thing will really heat up. Right now though, we can only fly. Kira said in his mind. Cool. Naruto said as they then flew the rest of the way to the fire temple even though it was night time. The next day, he was almost there but when he was about a mile away, he decided to give Kira a rest and walk the rest of the way. On the way there, they chatted about random thing like what they liked and things like that, but they came across a boy about his age and in bad shape no less. I got this, the little raven said as she flew to the boy. Shadows of healing. The shadows from all around stretched out to the boy and healed his wounds. We should make camp and not move the boy for a bit. Naruto nodded and did just that. A few hours later, the boy woke up and looked around at Naruto. Naruto now noticed that the boy was wearing black and white monk's clothes and hair that kind of made him look like a girl. What the where am I? Asked the boy. A mile from the fire temple. So tell me, what happened? Asked the blonde soul reaper. The young monk scowled before his face saddened. I am not well liked in the fire temple. The reason well I have a bit of Kyuubi's chakra in me. My name is Sora by the why. Sora then looked back to see that Naruto had a shocked look, not a disgusted look like the monks back at the temple. You know, I thought I got rid of the Kyuubi's power when he unlocked my bloodlines. Naruto deadpanned. That was not the answer Sora ever expected. Who are you? He said. Name's Naruto Uzumaki, former demon container to the Kyuubi no Kitsune. So where are you from? The fire temple. But I really don't want to go back for they don't like me. Then come with me to Konoha and I can fix your problem. How? I am good at seals and I have made a seal that converts the demonic energy into spirit energy, giving you the ability to use a Shinigami's power like me, Naruto said as he gestured to his swords. I will go. I am tired of the hate. Good, but when we get to Konoha, we have hide the truth from everyone except the Hokage. I am sure he will help you as well, Naruto said as I brought out some ink and a brush. Naruto told him to lift up his sleeve and an hour later, the seal was complete. As soon as he applied it, the energy of the old QB shifted to the seal and then shot out a blade like Naruto's. Sora smiled and said, Thank you. We should go just in case if they send someone to come after me. All right, just know that you are also part of my little organization. Naruto said as he then explained to Sora what he was doing and to say the boy was shock would be an understatement. He was happy though because he was part of something that accepted him. Well, if we want to get to Konoha faster I will teach you the raven Shunshin. The small raven said to Naruto, causing Sora to fall back in surprise. But that could take a while so I will do the jutsu. When Sora was with them again, the raven grew again and wrapped her wings around the two boys and in a black whirlwind of feathers, they were gone. Gates of Konoha. Izumo and Kotetsu were once again guarding the gates and to say they were bored was an understatement. They had nothing to do. Well, that was about to change as a whirlwind of black feathers appeared out of nowhere and then the feather fly away as they turned into ravens. The two guards gawked at the blonde that just suddenly appeared with what looked to be a monk. Hey guys, I am back from my missions and I brought back a new friend. You know, 
I should have expected this, Izumo said with a smile. Yet Kotetsu smirked as they two boys walked to the Hokage Tower. The Hokage was currently doing paperwork with a clone when Naruto walked in with Sara. The old man looked up a rose and eyebrow and told Naruto to explain. Naruto retold his entire adventure to the Hokage, and when he was done, everyone in the room was looking at Naruto in shock. Ugh I am getting too old for this shit. The old man muttered. So let me get this straight. You now have power over nothingness, time, wood, sand, whatever is in that scroll, the raven contract and their power over darkness and shadows. Yep. The little raven answered for him. Oh, just give me a written report later but first here. Saratobi said as he handed Naruto a scroll full of Mukutan Jutsu. Trust me you will need that. Now about your friend, your sensei just went on another mission, so they won't be back for a bit. I think it would be prudent that he is instated on your team some no one asks of his past. Thanks old man. Naruto said to the shock of Sora. With that they left and building and started walking in the direction of a certain training ground. Where are we going? A friend of mine asked me to train with her team when I got back. I want you to meet her and some of my other friends. On the way there, Naruto decided to take out the scroll he had gotten from the Kazakage and look over the jutsu inside. Though the first thing he was a seal that had the kanji for iron sand. As soon as he put his hand on it, the seal glowed. It activated his black hole seal and his yuzugan. It created a seal on Naruto's arm next to his regular sand seal that held a good amount of iron sand in it. When it stopped, the monk said, that was interesting. Does this happen a lot? I guess so. My Yuzigan copies bloodlines and let me use them. I guess all I really need is their DNA. Sora just shrugged as they made their way to the training grounds. Ten Ten immediately came over. Naruto. How was your mission? It was interesting to say the least. Me and Kiba's team saved the Waterfall Village. I got a girlfriend from the Waterfall Village. Went and saved the Kazakage's son from some runes. Then I met my new teammate Sora. Naruto said to a shocked Ten Ten. Her teammates, Lee and Niji, and Sensei, Dai, came over after hearing the story. Lee watched as Niji came over to Naruto and scowled at him. There is no way a dead last loser could do all that. You are fated to be a loser for the rest of your life. Well, aren't we happy? Naruto deadpanned. Tell you what, we fight and I win you get that fate stick out of your ass. Fine, but you won't win. Fate has deemed that. Whatever man. Naruto said as he got into a fighting stance that he made up. He really needed to get his own if he wanted to face other taijutsu users. Kira, go over to Sara this is not a battle for you. Heh, no problem bro. She said as she flew away. With that, Niji flew toward him intent on showing Naruto how much of a loser he was. Naruto, however, smirked as Niji struck all his chakra points in one go. When the Hyuga was done he stepped back and was shocked that the Naruto he had defeated was a shadow clone. You make this to easy man. Naruto said as he reappeared next to Niji while hanging on his shoulder. You cannot escape fate. Yelled the now enraged Hyuga as he destroyed yet another shadow clone. Guy was smiling at the blonde. He really hoped that Niji would lose and learn that fate does not control everything. Cats out of the bag. Naruto announced as he disappeared to everyone else but Niji as he had his Byakugan activated and began blocking and dodging all of Naruto's sword strikes. Both Tenten and Guy's eyes widened for learn that attack. Tenten really wanted to spar with the guy now. Guy was impressed that a genin could use Yugao's attack so easily. Niji just growled and slammed a chakra-enhanced palm strike right to Naruto's chest, sending the blonde back a few feet. Niji capitalized on that and rushed Naruto. 8 trigrams, 64 palms. That attack sealed all of Naruto's chakra points. Naruto just smirked weakly at Niji. That may have hurt like hell, but he does not need to use chakra to bet this jerk. Damn that hurt. Naruto said on his knees. Niji smirked but was surprised to see Naruto on his knees instead of on ground, writhing in pain. Now do you see you are a loser? All I see is someone that has a stick up so far their ass they can't see how good their life is. I know about that Hyuga seal and I think I can make a new one that won't total fuck you up but I am debating whether or not to do it. He paused looking at the shocked expression on all their faces. Right now though, I am going to kick your ass. I may not be able to use chakra but that didn't stop me in those runes I had to go to. Naruto said as he channeled spirit energy in one hand while channeling physical energy in his other. That hell? Niji commented as he saw two different energies being channeled by his opponent. Naruto smirked as he slammed his fist into the ground, creating a mini earthquake and pretty much destroying land surrounding him. He wasted no time in executing his next attack as he rose he hand and yelled by a kurai. White lightning shot out of Naruto's hand so fast that Niji didn't have time to dodge, and he was sent clear across the training grounds. When he did not get back up, 
Guy rushed to his student in a panic, only to find out that the kid was just staring at the sky. Naruto walked over and held out a hand, to which Niji took with some effort. Looks like I lost but I will hold you to your word that you will fix that seal. You got it. Naruto said as he saw there was a change in the young Hyuga. Hey, try to get along with your family if you can, because after all you are family. Niji just nodded as group began to par with each and got to know Sora. Lee, however, was happy there was someone else who could use spirit energy. He just needed to find a way to spar with in that field. Then the real fun would happen. It has been a month since Naruto came back and beat the sense into Niji. During that time, Naruto hung out with his new friends and sparred with them when he was not hanging out with the others or training with his senseis. When he tried to use the regular sand or the metal sand the first time it was not pretty. As soon as he tried to control it, and attacked him and whacked him in the face a few times. Finally, he had enough and talked to Gara through their seal and the sand man told him not to control the sands but to let it flow around his being and use his chakra to point, and in the right direction. Later, it would let him control it that was how it worked for Gara and Naruto's side as he would have to do the same thing. Halfway through the month, he was able to get some control over it, and he has been working on that ever since. Thanks to the old man and the Mokutan scroll he had given him, he was able to get some jutsu learned about that as well. He was by no means a master but he was slowly getting there. Now, however, our favorite blonde hero was in the Hokage's office for he had been called there for another joint mission. Naruto waited as the Hokage talked with his potential team to be working with. Apparently, Team 7 wanted a higher mission because they were very sick of deranked missions. He agreed to that notion, those missions really sucked. He then heard his name to be called in. Naruto walked in to see the startled faces of Team 7 and smirked. Yo, wait, Naruto is going to be our backup? Sakura asked, yes, he has had some C-ranked mission that turned into higher ones recently, so I think it is only right that you all go together. He has worked with every other team from this year's graduating class, and they even think he is capable. Sarutobi said, fine with me. Sasuke said. Sakura smiled with Sai said nothing at all not caring. Kakashi just chuckled. He would be getting the boy he wanted on his from the beginning on his team to wave. Right, send the client in. The Hokage said and a door opened to reveal a drunken old man. This is my team? They are kids. Besides, that blonde one looks weak. The client was cut off from saying any more as Naruto had sent his dagger and chain to surround him. The dagger was in front of his face, weaving back and forth like a snake. Be careful what you say old man. Other than Kakashi, I am the strongest on this team. I have already been on a three C-ranked missions where two went to B rank and the other to A rank. The A rank is when I had to save the Kazakage's son, so please be more respectful. You yourself are not really respectful to anyone. The Hokage deadpanned. Touche old man, touche. Naruto smirked while Team 7 face palmed as they left. Before he left though, the old told him to stay for a second. Naruto, when this mission is done, I would like you to go on another mission like last time. This time, however, it is to the Miss Village. You are to find a lady named Meitarumi and aid her in getting rid of her crazy Mizukage. In turn for helping them, they will sign a treaty with us, making our alliance bigger. Please don't mess this up. Got it, old man. The blonde said as he left, he wished he could take Sora with him but the Hokage wanted him in the village, just in case if those monks were looking for him. That would be bad if they found him at all. Why do I get the feeling that something bad is going to happen? Saratobi grumbled. Gates. Once at the gates and they had everything they needed for the trip, they began their journey. Along the way, Sakura kept glancing over to the oblivious blonde and she had to admit that he was cute. Yeah, she got over her crush the day of the team placements when Sai chewed her out for being weak. She was now great at genjutsu and becoming a good medic neem. Sasuke had to admit that she was useful now. Speaking of the last Uchiha, he was walking next to the blonde. It seemed that the blonde was not much but deception is a ninja's weapon and Naruto hid his skills well. Dobe what was it like in Suna? Sandy? The place isn't that bad though. I became friends with the Kazakage's kids. Naruto said while Kakashi quirked an eyebrow. All three of them Naruto? Asked the one-eyed man. Yep, but for some reason, Temari has some sort of crush on me at least I think she does because she gave me a kiss before I came back. The members of Team 7, except for Sai naturally, all had wide eyes. Sakura was a little jealous of the girl while Sasuke just smirked. Kakashi however gave a perverted giggle and said, So did you enjoy it? I am not sure. Right now I like the kisses I get from Fu better right now because she is my girlfriend. Naruto stated while Sasuke and Sakura face planted on the ground and the white-haired Jonin just stopped, making Sai stop as well. Who is Fu? 
Sakura ground out. Fu is the sister to Shibuki, the waterfall village's leader. Stated Naruto. Damn Naruto, you are getting all the girls from out of the village, you know that? Sasuke said. Not to mention the girls back home, including some of my former fangirls. I thank you for that, but you are so freaking clueless. Wow you are truly like your father, Naruto. Kakashi stated. Kushina was not originally from the village either. Too bad Jiraiya is not here. He make a book out this kid's love life and maybe get the kid to have harem he he he. Naruto sighed as they walked some more. He could not understand what the big deal was but he also didn't care. Then they passed the puddle and he knew that it had not rained in weeks. He looked to Kakashi and the man nodded slightly, showing he knew as well. They would be attacked soon. Five seconds after passing the puddle, two ninja, wearing chunin gear from the mist, came out and wrapped their chains around Kakashi. Time for you to die. One of them yelled as they tugged on the chain, ripping Kakashi to shreds. Sakura screamed in horror while the three boys went to work. Sai stayed with Sakura to protect Tazuna while Naruto and Sasuke went to fight the two Miss Ninja. One of the two sent their gauntlet chains at Sasuke but the Uchiha jumped above it and sent a fire jutsu, which hit ANS made the Miss Ninja run around frantically before hit a tree. He pretty much knocked himself out as he was burned alive. In Naruto's battle, the blonde jumped above the chains that were sent his way. He then landed on them, ran up the length of the chain while cover his right arm with metal, and punching the guy right in the gut, sending him into a tree. Naruto smirked as he did some hand signs and called out, Satetsu and Mokutan, Iron Tree Binding, the tree the Mist Ninja land next to, bent around his body while also being covered in the metal, which was a bit spiky to hurt the Mist Ninja. Kakashi appeared next to Sasuke and just gawked at Naruto with the rest of his team. Tazuna, who was already impressed by the ninja, wondered what the big deal was. Okay, I take that as not a normal ninja power. He said out loud, bring them out of their stupor. Naruto, how do you have the powers of the first Hokage and the third Kazekage? Kakashi asked seriously. The genin of Team 7 had wide eye when they heard that, along with seeing Kakashi alive again. Let's get some info from this guy first. Naruto stated. A half hour later, they found out that they were the demon brothers from the mist, and they were sent to kill the bridge builder for a business tycoon named Gato. Naruto, being his usual self decided he would continue the mission, which gave the other enough courage to do so as well. Along the way, he told them about his recent missions and about his powers. While walking they had wide eyes. This was not something you heard every day. Sasuke was the first to get out of his stupor and say, So you're Yuzugan. It is like the Sharingan but it copies bloodlines instead of normal jutsu. Yep. And you have the strength of Tsunade and the speed of the fourth Hokage? Sai asked with some emotion for once. Yep. You also have another bloodline that makes you a Shinigami? Sakura asked. Yep. You are the most unpredictable I know Naruto. Kakashi said while Tazuna shook his head. He had the weirdest team, but in a sense, the best team. A half hour later, after crossing some water in a boat, Naruto threw a kanai into a bush. It turned out to be a rabbit that he heard. While Sakura was berating him for scaring a small rabbit, Kakashi told them to duck. They all dropped to the ground with Sai grabbing the old man as a huge ass sword flew over them. A man in a black tank top like shirt with the same colored pants landed on the blade. He also had cameo colored arm warmer and a slash mist headband on his head that was at an odd angle. Another odd thing about the man was that he had half of his face covered in bandages that had he had no eyebrows. Good student you have there Kakashi. The man said, Sabuza Momochi. Kakashi said before he chuckled. No, he is not my student, though I wish he was. He is just helping me on this mission, to bad said Zabuza. Now, are we going to have to do this the hard way or the easy way? I am assuming you are here to kill the bridge builder? Kakashi asked to which he got a nod from the eyebrowless man. Well, I can't let you do that. Well, it never hurt to ask. Zabuza said while doing hand signs. Hidden mist jutsu. The area was instantly covered in a thick layer of mist. Naruto scowled and said, let me handle this Kakashi, then you can have your fun. Wind style, great breakthrough. A wind whipped around Naruto before it went out in all directions to get rid of the mist, thoroughly annoying the mist swordsman. Damn a wind user. No brows mumbled, but he quickly dodged an attack from the right, courtesy of Kakashi. Don't worry about him, you be worried about yourself. With that, Kakashi revealed his one Sharingan eye even the odds. They started flinging jutsus back and forth before one got Kakashi and sent him into the water. What the why is it heavier than OHSHIT? Kakashi tried to get out of the water but Zabuza was faster as he trapped the copy ninja in a water prison. Naruto! Take the others and go! 
No, I heard about your little fun fact about life and like you said, if we abandoned you, we would be worse than trash. Naruto said in all seriousness. Sai, what can you do? I can create ink animals but they are useless with all this water around. Damn okay, Sakura and Sai, keep the bridge builder safe while Sasuke and I kick this guy's ass. Naruto said while the two nodded. He did see Sai create few animals that kind of looked unstable. Before he could think of a good plan, a clone of Zabuza came up behind them and almost took off their head, but they quickly ducked in time. Naruto growled, as he used his speed to slash through the clone to find that it was a water clone. He then rushed towards the missing Nin only to find himself and Sasuke surround by more water clones. Oh screw this. Naruto complained as he took out one of his swords and yelled, Rule the Titans, Kronos. The small blade shifted to that of a large chainsaw-like blade. Time acceleration. To everyone, the blonde looked to be a blur going way too fast for them to see as he shredded through the clones like it was nothing. The hell? Yelled Zabuza from his spot looking at shocked as everyone else. Surprised? Well this is what a Shinigami can do. Naruto smirked but that quickly turned into a scowl as Zabuza created more water clones, at least twenty of them. Ten went after him while the other ten went after the Uchiha. Damn Sasuke, if you survive, you will probably gain the Sharingan. Sasuke's battle. The last Uchiha growled as he had to overwork his body to defend himself from the water clones. Unfortunately, he got niched a few times by the end of the blade, so he was bleeding now. Then one swung in a horizontal arc, letting the Uchiha jump and onto it, quickly forming a few hand signs for a new attack he wanted to try. When he was done, he noticed that everything was moving slow motion, but quickly shook it off as nothing and launched his new jutsu. Fire style. Immortal Phoenix arc. The fire quickly spewed out of his mouth and he swung his arms around to create an arc of fire around himself, destroying all the Zabuza clones. When he landed on the ground in a crouching position, Kakashi saw that his student had the Sharingan as he slow rose up. It was about time too. Naruto's battle. Naruto looked at all the Zabuzas surrounding him and sighed as he took out his dagger and chain to use with his giant blade. The Zabuzas saw this was the time to attack and rushed in, bring the down blades all around Naruto. The blonde just jumped up and spun sideways to avoid all the blades. He quickly created 40 of his own shadow clones to create a division of what he was really going to do. At first, the former Miss Ninja was started to find out that this blonde could create 40 shadow clone in one go, but it soon wore of as he saw his own clones making quick of Jenin's own clones. Now he was waiting for the damn smoke to dissipate weight smoke. Shit, he planned this. Thought Sabuza as he looked around frantically for the blonde. When the smoke cleared, Kakashi's eyes widened when he saw what Naruto had in his hands. Gone was the huge chainsaw blade and in its place was the Gan. That was an attack he never thought he would see again. Everyone else just looked at Naruto odd before the blonde spoke. Hey no brows. Take this. Flash step. Naruto was so glad he learned how to channel spirit chakra to his legs just like the physical chakra. While he could not use the flying thunder god attack. He could at least use an attack no shinobi would ever expect. Naruto flash stepped to right and of the startled missing ninja of the mist, reared his hand back, and screamed, Raisin Gan. The small ball of energy sent the larger mist ninja flying across the water. But Naruto had used his dagger and chain wrapped around the man's leg and pulled on it to bring the man flying back. Naruto smirked as he jumped up and slammed down on Zabuza's gut, slamming the man into the ground, creating a small crater in the ground. Naruto covertly slipped a piece of paper in the man's pocket as Kakashi came up to him. Naruto turned and smiled that Kakashi was now safe from the water prison attack. Naruto how do you know the Raisin Gan? Well my teacher really had me working on chakra control since I had a lot of it and still do. The old man saw this and thought I should at least know one of my father's attacks. So he gave me a scroll on how to the Raisin Gan. I had to get the balloons and rubber balls myself but it only took a week for me to learn it. It really surprised my teachers and the old man. Naruto while Kakashi had dumbfounded look on his face. They were interrupted by a groan as Zabuza was starting to slowly get up but his neck was then pierced by some Saban. They looked to see a mist hunter Nin appear next to the fallen mist swordman. The hunter Nin looked to have a green robe that hid all concealed weapons and had a strange mask on. I thank you for defeating him. I have been tracking him for a long time. I will be leaving now. The hunter Nin said as he took the body and vanished. Man that was pain. Naruto complained out of nowhere. Thank you Naruto, but did you plan that? Asked Kakashi. No, I just made it up as I went along. Kira Proli thought it was Rin Naruto said as he looked over to his shoulder to see no raven there. He paled and said oh shit I am dead. 
He quickly preformed the summoning jutsu to get Kira to his side. You idiot! How could you leave me in that boring village? Came a shrill cry as a small raven appeared. Sorry Nachan, I was in a hurry and you were napping. I didn't want to wake you up. Naruto said as he shuddered at what happened the last time. Fine but you better not forget me next time. The small raven said as she flew up to his shoulder. I was worried, so could you tell me what has happened so far because knowing you, trouble happened. Sure. Naruto replied as he told her what happened. As they all walked to the Wave Village, the members of Team 7 and Tizuna were sweat dropping every time Naruto got pecked in the head by the small raven for doing something stupid. How can this kid go from being a total badass to a wimp being bullied by a raven? Tizuna thought as he walked while shaking his head. The raven contract who knew? The Cyclopes thought with an eye smile. I know I am not yet ready to him yet nowhere close. Thought the last Uchiha with a deadpan expression on his face as he watched the blonde. Why are things never normal with him Sakura complained in her head. At a hideout, in the forest of Wave Country, Sabuza was being treated for his injuries by the person his thinks of as a son but will never admit it. Just as the boy was done, a short man barged in with some samurai thugs. So you failed? The man asked with a smug grin, as if he knew the answer already. Yegato. Yeah, but just give me a week to recover and that bridge builder would be dead, along with those annoying Konoha ninja. Zabuza said, I have a better idea, how I kill you and save the girl for later. Gato said, gesturing to Zabuza's feminine-looking boy. The boy didn't take well to that as he was next to Gato in a heartbeat. He broke the small man's arm before his guards could react. You will not hurt Zabuza-sama, besides I am a boy. It took a moment for the thugs and Gato to register what they heard before they yelled, What? Haku that is enough the former Miss Ninja said. Gato, go and let me rest so I can complete my job. Find Zabuza just get it done. Gato yelled as he and his men left. Zabuza sighed as he leaned back on his chair. That short little man was a pain in the ass. As his hand brushed over his pocket, he felt that something was in there that normally was not. He quickly took it out and saw that it was addressed to him. Haku, did you put this in my pocket? He asked showing him the paper. No, I did not. Haku stated. Zabuza frowned and thought before he remembered that blonde ninja. Could it be from him? He needed to find out, so he opened it. Zabuza, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, you know, the blonde ninja. I read about your little battle with the Mizukage after I am done with this mission. I am to go to the mist and aid the rebel, led by Meitarumi, a beat some sense into him. After reading about that guy, it would seem to me that he is under some sort of powerful genjutsu. I am asking you to come with me to mist and help since you are from there. Please consider, Naruto Uzumaki, the ninja Shinigami. After reading that last bit, the demon of the mist almost had a heart attack. He had heard about him from some merchants. He defeated those things called hollows and helped the Kazakage's kid. He would have to consider this offer. Haku, I think we should take young Naruto's offer and help him at the end of the week. We will aid him in defeating the Mizukage. It will end then? Haku asked hopefully about the bloodline wars and mist. Yes, I think with his help it will. Sabuza said tiredly. Unfortunately for them, one of Gato's thugs heard and went to report it. With Gato, the thug had just explained what he heard Zabuza say and smirked. Heh, it is a god thing I am not going to pay the fool. Sir, what should we do? Asked the random thug. Nothing I am going to send one of those hollows on them all when he decides to attack. That should kill them all. Gato laughed as all his men quivered in fear at the thought of those things. Naruto and Team 7 it has been a day since they arrived at Tazuna's place in the Wave Village. Tsunami was very nice while her son was a little bitch. The brat cried about everything and told them they were just going to die. Of course Naruto ignored the little brat as he and his team was lead to the forest by Kakashi. Alright, I am going to teach you tree walking. A Kakashi I already know this along with water walking and kanai balancing. Naruto said. Well, can you show them for me? Eh, uh, why not? Naruto while the others wonder what was so special about climbing trees. Smirking, the blonde walked up the tree, all the way to the top and with no hands. Sasuke's eyes twitched, yet another thing Naruto was good at and not him. Remember, too much chakra and you fly off, but too little and you don't even stick. Very good Naruto. Sasuke, Sakura, Sai, I want you three to master this by the end of the week. That is the time I fear that Zabuza will be back and yes I think he is alive because of the fact that the hunter Nin did not dispose of the body at that spot. Kakashi said, I don't know it is him we should be worried about. Naruto said from atop the tree as he was walking down. I did ask him for help in defeating the Mizukage. Wait, what? Kakashi said with his eyes widened. 
My second mission after this is to go to the mist and help the rebels. I gave Zabuza a letter the moment I landed on him. Naruto said nonchalantly, You're insane, you know that? Kakashi said, The world would not be any fun if I wasn't. Naruto said while everyone's sweat dropped. Anyway since you have good chakra control, I want the two of us to spar. Kakashi ordered. Taijutsu only. Naruto smirked and said, Oh goody I get try out my Taijutsu styles now. Styles? Kakashi asked. Yeah, Gunma Sensei said I should have a Taijutsu style and not rely on my weapons. He was also teaching me elemental manipulation, so I combined them. So far, I only have two styles of my elemental fist styles. You can't be serious. The silver-haired man said I am afraid to ask but what styles do you know and what elements are you aligned with? Oh I got all of them. The blonde spoke with a cheerful smile as the Uchiha heard this and lost his footing. He fell on the ground rather hard. The two styles I have are the spiral fist for wind and the blaze fist for fire. Ugh this is going to be a long day. Kakashi deadpanned. Okay, let's go with the spiral fist first shall we? Naruto nodded and got into an odd stance and Kakashi left the air shift a bit. But other than that, nothing really happened. So the one-eyed man decided to charge in. As he threw a punch, Naruto bent back, dropped to the ground and tried to leg sweep the jonin but Kakashi just jumped up and Naruto smirked. That was the opening he was looking for. Sakura saw this as she was about to go back up the tree. She panicked but she didn't want to say anything for she wanted to see what would happen. Naruto jumped up with enhanced speed thanks to the wind surrounding him and palms struck Kakashi in the chest. The effect was instant as a huge blast of wind spiraled Kakashi in a nearby tree. The genin just looked shocked at what Naruto had just done. Sasuke could barely catch Kakashi like that, but Naruto was able to and send the man flying. There was a groan of pain as they saw Kakashi slowly get back up. Sakura, being the closest to the man saw that front of his jacket was warped into a spiral. Okay I believe you now but how did you learn wind manipulation so quickly? The Cyclopes asked. Oh that is easy shadow clones. I can make enough of them to train with and everything they learn comes back to the user. Naruto said. Oh, and in case you are wondering I based the spiral fist off the raisin gan. Oh, no wonder why it hurts so much. Kakashi said as he touched his chest. So, what does your blaze fist look like? Naruto smirked and crossed his arms so that his fists were on either side of his face with his fingers pointed away from him. His fingers were in the shape of claws so it would hurt more. Then, his hands and feet were set ablaze. Kakashi also saw that wisps of fire lashed out around the blonde's body, as if to protect him. This is the stance for my blaze fist wanna give it a chance? Naruto asked with a smirk. Ah no. After the spiral fist I am sure of that. Kakashi deadpanned, not wanting to get burned at the moment. He then got an idea and asked, Why are you creating different styles like this, to have a surprise in battle? Besides, I plan on combining them to create a sixth style called the Elemental Fist. I see well how about I teach you lightning manipulation since I know Gemna won't know how to do that. You can create your own style later. Kakashi offered. Sure, Naruto said. Shadow Clone Jutsu. With that, over a hundred Narutos filled the clearing. The reaction this was comical. Sai gawked on a branch. Sasuke was looking around frantically at all the Narutos and having a mental meltdown as this was just not possible in his opinion. And Sakura her eyes widened, giggled perversely and fainted falling out of the tree she was in. Luckily, a Naruto clone caught her and wondered what was wrong with her clueless as usual. For the rest of the week, Kakashi taught Naruto lightning manipulation. Kakashi decided to see what his other students' chakra natures were. It turned out that Sakura had earth, Sai ironically had water, and the Uchiha had fire and bit of lightning. Knowing Theseus thing were enough for the copycat ninja as he taught them all some jutsu for later on. There was Alos a small oddity that were the Uchiha and Naruto sparred. They had both used their dejutsu and Naruto copies the Uchiha bloodline. He did not understand why but he knew a few attacks that most Uchiha didn't know. The end of the week came a little too quickly for the group. Naruto had seen the Haku boy again when he trained himself to sleep one night. That brat Inari pissed him off so much that he went and trained to blow off some steam. After Kakashi told him a little about the blonde's life, he started to understand him a bit more. Of course he was dead scared of the small raven that Naruto always had on his shoulder. Because for every time he bitched about them dying, she would try and peck his eyes out. Now however, the group was at the bridge with some of Naruto's shadow clones keeping watch at the bridge builder's home, just in case if Gato tried something. As they approached the bridge, they saw a thick mist. As they entered, they saw a bunch of workers unconscious and on the ground. Zabuza and Haku were in the middle of them. Naruto rose an eyebrow and said, So you wanna fight? Zabuza smirked beneath his mask and said, Yeah, 
I wanna spar a bit before I decide to join you. Fine by me. Sasuke announced, getting into his stance. I think not. Came a voice behind the Kanoha ninja. They turned to see that the mist was clearing to reveal several samurai, and leading them was the business tycoon himself, Gato. The small businessman smirked and said, Sorry Zabuza. I was never going pay you and now, I will kill you and these pathetic Kanoha ninja. Bring it out. The warriors parted to reveal a large metal crate. Two of the samurai unlatched the crate and with a roar, the front of the crate was blown away and out stepped a huge black monster with a bone mask. Kill them for me. Gato commanded. The creature stared at Gato for a moment before saying, Pathetic mortal you cannot command me, but I will get rid of this Shinigami for my own purposes. The beast said as it turned its head to the minions of Gato, who were surprisingly not showing any fear. It is time. At this, the ninja group watched in horror as the samurai were ripped apart, leaving more creatures in their place. The main monster then brought its hand down on a completely shocked Gato, ending his pitiful life. Shit this can't be good. Kira stated, bring everyone out of their stupor. Naruto, what are these? Sakura asked frantically. These are hollows and it seems that they are being led by Aminos class hollow well I think it is Aminos. Naruto answered. Just remember to destroy the mask and you will win. Right let's do this. Sasuke said as Sai nodded. Sabuza and Haku prepared to fight off these things as well. Sabuza was going to see the extent of the blonde's power today. Shinigami you will die along with your allies. The hollow said and Naruto took a better look at it. It was very tall and humaniate in appearance, had grayish skin, large ass wings on its back, and its mask looked like that of a tiger's. Who the hell are you? You're now like the other hollows I have beaten. Yes, I am nothing like those weaklings you killed. Yes, I am a Minos, but I am also an Ajuchas a middle class Minos. I wonder if you are anything like the old Shinigami would trust me I would know because I was one of the many hollows that destroyed them in soul society. But in the years of peace, my skills have diminished over the years, so let's see how I stack up to a new Shinigami. This is so not good be careful Naruto. Kira said from her spot on his shoulder. You got that right Kira this is not good at all. Naruto commented. Attack them and leave the Shinigami to me. The large tiger humanoid hollow ordered. Kakashi cursed. He was so glad they told the bridge builder to stay at home today. He, along with the others rushed forward to kill this small army of fifty or so hollows. This was so not his day. Naruto rushed to the odd leader of the hollows, activated Zenas, and attacked without mercy. All that seemed to do was annoy the high-class hollow. Naruto leapt back and yelled, Nothing wave. The wave of energy caught the off-guard hollow and blasted him back a few feet, but that was all. The Ajucha smirked and roared out, sending out a Ciro straight at the blonde. Naruto growled, sending another nothing wave to cancel out the attacks. Haku and Zabuza were far much better as Haku used his speed to his advantage to confuse the nearby hollows while Zabuza took his time in destroying the confused hollows in the mist. They were no match for the swordman's huge sword. Haku saw the cancelled out attack that Naruto and the leader hollow had made. He saw the creature coming at the blonde at speed that he thought that Naruto could not dodge from. He rushed in to help. The ice user quickly grabbed the blonde and jumped up while preforming a jutsu to distract the beast for a few seconds. Ice style. Nitro Dagger. The Yuzigan came to life and quickly copied the bloodline of the ice user. It then deactivated on its own. Naruto blinked a few times before scowling, he need to control that. He then turned his attention to Haku's attack and saw large spikes of super cold ice rain down on the hollow. To his surprise all it did was freeze the beast for a few seconds before it thrashed around and broke free, charging for them. Haku, thank for that but go back to Zabuza, I will beat him somehow. Naruto said as the ice user disappeared from his view. I am not ready for this shit. Naruto growled out as he dodged the hollow's claws. Kakashi was back to back with a few of his clones, all with their Sharingan revealed. They were preforming jutsu like no tomorrow. Well if they messing up there would be no tomorrow, so no pressure. He then saw three large hollows. The real Kakashi killed one with his Raikiri attack while the clones burnt the shit of them with fire jutsu. He was doing good so far but he was running out of chakra and fast. He just hoped that his student were okay. The trio of Team 7 was sweating bullets. These things were strong and they had only heard about them in the academy. They were not prepared to actually fight these things. They were surrounded by these things and the only thing they could do at the moment was to try out their new jutsu they were taught. Sakura was first to attack. Earth style. Raging fists. She called out as the earth itself was attaching itself to her hands and arms, creating some armor. She smirked as the hollows hesitated for a second and that was all she needed as she performed another jutsu. Earth style, 
Quake fists, the pink hair girled the startled hollows and punched them with earth-shattering force. Their bodies flew away from the force of her attacks. She was luck that she got their masks because this jutsu combination was draining, and she could not keep this up for long. Sasuke was next as jumped into the air and yelled, Fire style, spinning dragon. Sasuke started spinning wildly as fire surround him until it created a dragon. It then shot straight through a good amount of the hollow before arcing in another direction. That direction was the hollow that was about to claw up Naruto. He rammed into the hollow, and it cancelled out his jutsu. Fortunately, it sent the hollow flying back. Thanks Sasuke. Naruto panted as he got back up. He needed to new strategy. No problem, we can't have you dying on us. Sasuke smirked before reactivating his jutsu and headed straight for the hollows that were giving Sakura a hard time. We see Sai preforming some hand signs and calling out a new jutsu of his. Water style. Rapid cyclone blades. The water from below rushed up to surround the pale boy, forming a cyclone of water around him before blades of water shot out and decimated the hollows around him. He was enjoying this. Since he had encountered Naruto, he felt he could befriend the boy and not be like his father, who he was starting to hate. Back to Naruto, leader of the hollows slowly got back up and growls. Enough of these interruptions. It yelled as it flew up into the air. Kira. Naruto said. Right. Replied the raven as it melted into Naruto's back and the wings grew. With that the blonde flew into the air. The air battle was on. Okay it was not that great of a battle because Naruto was still not used to Ari battle but was slowly getting there. Naruto, use your spiral fist it should speed us up and give this jerk some real hurt. Kira said in his mind. Naruto nodded as he went into his spiral fist and put his sword away. The effect was instant. As soon as the blonde rushed forward, there was a sonic boom. He had struck the hollow on the way, twisting up its skin. The hell? It yelled not prepared for this. He seriously doubted his chances of winning now. Naruto just smirked as he did it again and again, creating sonic booms with each turn as he kept at the hollow freak. Most of the other hollows on the ground had fled at this point, seeing that most of their comrades were dead and this Shinigami was scaring the crap out of them. The ninja from below were watching in awe as Naruto's battle was going on. Sabuza was more than impressed by this blonde now more than ever. The leader of the hollow army was not frantically weighing his opions. He could escape now and report this to his master but he wanted to really hurt this Shinigami. He then looked to the Shinigami's friends and spotted the ice user, the one that froze him. All of a sudden, the hollow disappeared. Naruto looked around before he saw that he appeared right behind Haku. He tried to shout a warning but was too late as the hollow shot a fist through the young teen's chest killing him instantly. Haku! Naruto and Zabuza screamed. The hollow backed up as Naruto appeared before his fallen friend. He looked to the hollow, rage building up in his system, it seemed that was uncontrollable. Kakashi and the other saw that Naruto was pissed but what scared them was what came next. He screamed out in pain as a bone mask formed on his face and his eyes turned yellow. With primal rage, the masked blonde rushed the hollow. Shit, a wizard! It said as it decided it was time to go and vanished, leaving a pissed off Naruto, who as his rage turned on to his friend, not distinguishing friend from foe. In other areas, three other felt Naruto's rage and yelled through their link to calm down. Fu Gara and Sara were frantically yelling for him to calm down. Luckily for Naruto's allies he did calm down, but just back out, not yet ready for power like that. The others looked in shock. This was not a battle they were ready for anytime soon. Sasuke and Sakura could understand why Naruto went ballistic for a fallen comrade, but they did not have that type of power to help him. Zabuza was cradling his son while crying a bit. If only that beast had stayed, then Haku's death would have been avenged by the blonde. He would live on for his son. Kakashi picked up Naruto, knowing the pain of losing someone like that. He hoped the boy could move on, unlike him. In a dark cave, the defeated hollow kneeled before a man in a long black cloak with red clouds. There was also an orange swirl mask with one hole on the man's face. Master, I have returned. Yes, and it would seem you took a beating, Tigre Alado. Explain. The man said, We hollows have grown soft, I will admit that. Without the old Shinigami to challenge us, we have become weak. Now that a new Shinigami is here, we are at a disadvantage, the hollow explained. The boy, Naruto Uzumaki, is strong, along with his comrades. But when I killed one of them, he went into a fit of rage, he temporarily acquired the power of a wizard. I see. It would seem that our kind must prepare our plans sooner than later. This man's body has been useful to me but soon, I will have to dispose of it, and return to my hollow self. The hollow looked up hopeful. Truly Lord Nexus? Yes, now go to the others and tell them to prepare. 
The time is coming sooner than later. Nexus commanded. The hollow nodded and disappeared. A moment later, a man with orange hair, many piercing on his face, and ringed eyes walked into a part of the cave Nexus was in. Toby, come. The man said. Yes, leader Sama. Toby is a good boy. Nexus exclaimed as he followed the man. Inwardly he grimaced. Soon, I will be able to quit this idiotic facade, and then, the Rinnegan will be mine once again. I should never have given it the six pad sage to begin with. Nexus thought as he followed Pain, with Naruto, Naruto, Sabuza, Team 7, and the villagers of Wave were all on the now complete bridge. Thanks to Naruto's shadow clones, the got done sooner than expected. Inari walked up to Naruto and said, Please come back soon. Naruto smiled and said, You got it, and that is a promise. That is good to hear. Tizuna said, Yes, well, we should be going. Kakashi said as they started to walk away. When they were halfway off the bridge, Tsunami asked, Father, what should we call the bridge? I think we should name it after the person who helped us to the end. The Great Naruto Bridge. The old man said as the crowd gave a cheer of agreement. Back with the ninja, the group had stopped at the end of the bridge and Kakashi asked, Naruto are you sure you don't need our help for your mission? Nah, but thanks Kakashi. Zabuza is enough after all. Besides I am sure he will be happy to see his old friends if he had any. I am standing right here you know. Zabuza commented with a tick mark on his face. Come on, I am just messing with you. Naruto smirked. Yeah but it is pretty easy getting under your skin. Kira announced. Damn bird Zabuza muttered to himself but got pecked out anyway. Throughout the time, the two have gained an odd relationship. After that, Kakashi nodded and led his team back to Konoha while Naruto, Zabuza, and Kira went the other direction towards the Mist Village. Along the way, they met an odd man who liked bubbles a bit too much in Zabuza's opinion. The teen turned out to be Yudakata, container of the six-tailed slug. Naruto could tell the teen had been betrayed once before, so he treaded lightly before gaining some of the man's trust. The blonde then told him about his group and he reluctantly joined and after putting the seal on the team, they parted ways for the time being. A few hours later, we find the group walking through a forest full of think mist. The village hidden in the mist what a fucking pain in the ASS. Naruto yelled, UGH, this is just like that desert genjutsu. Zabuza smirked as the kid finally got it. You can break Jinjutsu easily, but you suck at detecting them, you know that. If that was the case, why did you not say anything? Well, we were hoping you would figure it out. We? Naruto asked as he turned to Zabuza, only for him and everything else to fade away into a small village with a lot of people smirking at him. Okay, so you are the one Konoha has sent us, and with a former swordsman no less. Came the voice of a woman with rusty red hair that covered one of her green eyes in some kind of blue battle dress. To say she was hot was an understatement. She was smoking hot. Yeah well, I good at other things than genjutsu. Naruto said sheepishly. We kind of figured that out. A man with an eye path deadpanned. Right. Well I am Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto said with a smile. My name is Meitarumi and these are my two guards, Ao and Chojiro. The red-headed woman said. It would also seem that you brought back an old friend, Zabuza Momochi. How in the world did you ever find him? He, found me on my last mission. Naruto explained as they walked to a small house. Once there, Mei gave Zabuza a sad smile. I am sorry. Don't be his death made me into a better person. The swordsman muttered. Mei sighed and turned to Naruto. Naruto, the reason I have called you here is because we need your help in dispelling a genjutsu surrounding our mizukage. Ao, has an implanted Byakugan and can see a powerful genjutsu surrounding the mizukage, but we do not have the power to dispel it. She explained with a sad smile. I see. I will see what I can do. Naruto said. When do we do this? Tomorrow, so please be ready. Chojiro said as he and Zabuza left for some training. The next day, we see our favorite group with the rest of the rebels at the gates of the main village of the mist. They saw Yagura and sixty men just standing there, waiting for them. So nice of you to come again Mei-chan but today you will die. I will not let you escape like the other times. The young face of Yugura, who in everyone's opinion, liked like a cheerful kid. But that was not for Naruto as he saw this was not a genjutsu and grimaced. That is not a genjutsu. Naruto deadpanned, much to the shock of the rebels and the quirking of the eyes of all of Yugura's men. Seeing he need to explain, he said, I have the unique ability to see the dead. But why explain what I am seeing to you all when I could just show you? With a smirk directed at Yugura, who paled a bit. Naruto channeled some spirit energy to his fist, which everyone saw, and slammed the fist into the ground, creating a shock wave of energy. Slowly but surely, they all began to see what Naruto saw. 
Yugura looked like a pale puppet attached to some spirit strings. What was controlling him was someone who they were not expecting at all. The man who started the bloodline massacres in the first place. The second Mizukich. F father! yelled Zabuza. Okay that was another thing I would not like to know. Naruto sighed. Hey well it would seem you have Shinigami in your little group, Mei Terumi. The second Mizukich then threw the limp body of the fourth Mizukich into a tree, angering a lot of people. He then turned to his son. Well Zabuza, you are probably wondering how I am here. Well, you can thank the third Mizukage for bringing me back to life and yes, he is very much alive as well. After the initial shock of seeing his father again, Sabas's rage began to grow. You you made mine and everyone's lives hell with that graduation exam, then with the killing of bloodline users, and now this just what the hell are you? He is a demi-hollow not a true hollow but they can be a pain in the ass trust me. I had to deal with the same thing for Gara, the Kazakage's kid. Some nut job priest was taking control of the Shikaka Naruto explained but that mad Zabuza even angrier. You will pay for this. I am going to wipe you from existence. He yelled in a blind rage as he charged at him. Naruto and the others told to him to stay but they yelled on deaf ears. As soon as he got within striking distance of the demi hollow, he struck out with his blade, only to find air. Then, the man appeared before him and jammed a fist in Zabuza's chest. Foolish son, I am the one who taught you everything and I always beat you. The father then gave an evil smirk and ripped out Zabuza's heart but no one ever saw his soul. Naruto wondered he just passed over to see his son. Naruto growled and took out his blades while activating his Yuzugan. Mei-san, cover me. Today we are talking this thing down. Mei nodded and preformed two jutsu. A corrosive mist that just irritated the dead man, but when she sent out some lava bullets, he dodged like his life depended on it. While this was happening, the Yuzugan was yet again copying the bloodlines that this woman had. Quickly shaking off the feeling of copying the bloodlines again, he activated his cannon blade and blasted out a wave of pure lava from the blade. Naruto smirked at everyone's shocked looks as he incinerated the annoying demi hollow of the second Mizukage. He turned to the others and shrugged. What? It is my bloodlines. They seemed to buy it for now as Naruto saw that Yugura was wailing up. He walked over to the young boy fro he had not aged since he had been possessed by the second Mizukage. He was probably Naruto's age. Hey, uh hi. What is going on? The last thing I remember was looking at the third Mizukage Sharingan eye. Naruto sighed as he offered a hand to Yugura. Well, that is some new info, but let's just say, not everything is as it seems. Narut said as he began to explain a lot of things. Yugura was shell-shocked, all this time that he had been asleep. He had really been a puppet of some sick man's crazy desires. I am sorry but that is all I can really say, the boy said as most of his soldiers went to home to rethink their lives. All that has happened over the years was just a sick lie to them. Well it does not matter at the moment. You are safe now. Naruto said as he took out some ink and a brush. Yugura, I want you to join my group. There are others like us and I have found a few already. My girlfriend Fu is one and the Kazakage's kid as well. I see then I am and I wish to do good now. Yugura said as Naruto nodded and started to apply the seals. He then explained to everyone what was going to happen and about the what he thought was going to happen to him. Well, if that happens, I want you to visit us, and when you get that soul village up and running, we would love to be your ally, Mei said with a smile. Thank you, Mei san, and good luck with reforming this place, you are going to need it. Naruto deadpanned. Yes, well, we have been fighting for a long time, so we should be able to do that. Ao said from his spot next to Mei, on another note, you said you have a bloodline as well. What is it? Naruto smirked and said, actually, I got three. That made everyone's eyes widen. You see, the seeing of the spirits is part of one of my bloodlines. That is called the Shinigami bloodline where it gives me the power of one. The Shinigami that you all are talking about is actually the king of the Shinigami. Wow. Chojiro said wide and eyed and pretty much said what was on everyone's mind. Yeah, the second is something that everyone knows. The energy that lets Sonata use her super strength, physical energy. Now, the yellow flash is the same case since he is my dad but he had to create some kunai to direct himself to the spot he wanted to run to. I would not try without using the kunai trust me. Naruto said while rushing his back, making everyone sweat drop. That is why I prefer to use spirit energy, and use the flash step, oh, and could you not tell anyone that my father was the yellow flash? If that is what you want may said a little uneasy about being in front of the yellow flash's son. She did have to admit that that man go out a son before he died. Now, my third one is called the Yuzigen. It lets me copy bloodline jutsu but not normal jutsu. Naruto explained. He looked at everyone to see that they all had flabbergasted expressions. 
but none more than May herself. Naruto, would your mother be Kushina Uzumaki? Uh, yeah, how did you know? Asked the blonde. Kushina and I were best friends back in Whirlpool Country. When it was destroyed, I thought I lost her, but I guess she lived. So how is she? Uh, she died when I was born. Naruto said sadly. Oh, well, I have some good news for you then. Naruto quirked an eyebrow at this. She said that if she ever had a kid that I would be your godmother, and since I know you probably got my bloodlines, here is a scroll for you to learn from. She said as she handed him a scroll full of jutsu, then she leaned in and hugged him. You take care Naruto. Thanks Mei. Naruto said as he hugged her. Ao and Chojiro were happy that Mei had some family but Chojiro was a little peeved that Mei was a hugging someone other than him. After that, he left through the gates, waving to his family in the mist village. He had plenty of time to get back home. After all, the old man thought that this mission would take longer. So he decided to travel the border till he needed to get back. Three days later, Naruto sighed at the gloomy atmosphere of the Valley of the End. This place may have been the ending battle between Madara Uchiha and Hiroshima Senju but that was it. Whatever happened between those two, pretty much killed the land. With a shake of his head, he leapt away from that depressing place. As he was traveling, he sensed the few halls ahead of him, and it seemed that they going after some high-level shinobi. That was not good. Even high-level shinobi had trouble with hollows. Naruto smirked as he raced through the trees. These hollows were starting to show themselves more and more. They were becoming pests that needed to just go away. He reached the edge of the clearing to see that there were fifteen hollows surrounding what looked to be an important caravan. He looked to see that they had Iwa's headband on. That made him hesitate for a few seconds before scowling. These guys were still human so it did not matter to him. They might still hate his father but that was no reason to hate his kid, especially if he saved them. He saw a couple of the hollow eat one of them whole and growled. Now was the time to help. He used flash step to get over them to knock away a rather large hollow that was about to crush a very small old man. Not while I am around, he shouted and the large hollow curse. Damn you Shinigami no matter. You will die and no longer be a pain in our side. The leader of the hollows growled. Of course the old man and his two remaining guards looked at the boy like he was nuts. Boy you should go. These monsters are not easily beaten. The old shouted at the blonde. Not so much old man. Naruto smirked as one of the hollows came straight at him. Naruto jumped up and took one of his swords out and stabbed it in the mask. It roared in pain as it dissolved into this air, much to the shock of the men behind him. Their mask is their weak point. Very interesting. Said a man with odd red body armor that covered most of his body. The man also had a large hat that had the same armor covering it. So all we have to do is pierce their masks. Easy for you to say Han mumbled the other man with IWA type armor and an odd dark mark across his face. These things just killed all of our men. Rashi you and Han are to help this boy in defeating these annoying creatures. The old man said, Yes, such a kajsama. Both men said, which made Naruto widen his eyes and then smirk. Well all right then. Naruto cheered as he charged into the fray. As he fought his own group of hollows, he could not help but observe the other two fighters. The red armor one used steam-based jutsu and was really cut throat with it as well. The other one used some odd taijutsu, making them back to each other before destroying them with a lava geyser of all things. Naruto smirked as he slashed through two of the hollows before using his insane strength to punch the next one in face far far away. The last hollow he had to fight was the leader of the hollows. You are indeed skilled young Shinigami but I am going to kill you. It yelled as it charged him. Right. Naruto deadpanned. Come from the void of nothingness, Zemness. Naruto called out as his small blade morphed into his cannon blade. This might be overkill but I want to try it out. For element destruction, Kanoha Mizu Kumo, IWA four large beams of energy shot out of the cannon blade, each with the four main elements surrounding them. Holy SH dash. The beast yelled as it was swallowed up by the blast of energy. As Naruto's sword went back to normal, the three IWA shinobi walked up to the boy, a bit gobsmacked that the boy had this much power. Finally, the old man spoke. Boy, that was impressive. You also look like the fourth Hokage. Are you his son? That was the big question. He could answer it in a few ways and any one of them could get himself killed. So he just decided to wing it. Yes, yes I am. There was a long silence before the old man smiled. Good. Then I can finally tell someone from Kanoha that we don't hate them. Besides, the Yandame was a great shinobi. Most of the simple-minded fools that hate Kanoha are now missing ninja. Anyway, I am Anoki, the Tsuchikage. Oh right. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, Kanoha's Shinigami.
I always thought that Kanoha's Shinigami would have been older. No matter, you saved us so what would you like for us to do for you? Naruto was shocked at first but soon got over it as he began to think about it. Uh, do you know any demon containers? The two men froze and looked at their kage for an answer. What would you need them for? Anoki asked with a raised eyebrow. To this, Naruto started to explain everything again. At the end, I could tell these three men were pissed off at Kanoha but they could not do anything about it. Anoki agreed with the seals on the demon containers and that Naruto visit IWA someday to set up the future alliance. After that they left, bidding Naruto good luck on his quest. Kanoha Danzo's hid out. Danzo growled to himself as his son left. He was losing the brat to Naruto of all people, losing to that brat as well. Came the voice of a very familiar winged tiger like Hollow. Tigre Alato, winged tiger, it has been too long. What do you need? Asked Danzo, his anger gone. Master has sent me to the others. The time has almost come. We need to get stronger than we are. I see so he wishes that we speed up our progress. I have set up all the necessary thing to overtake Kanoha I just need to create a few of our bloodlines. I know these humans will turn on me so will create bloodlines in my soldier that I know will be loyal to me till the end. Very well good luck with that. Besides you and your girlfriend will be more than enough to take this pathetic human hive over. Good luck, Awek Reyes Hollow Root, Tigre Alato said as he disappeared. Hamira, Kohara let's get started. Danzo said as two zombie-like council members walked in, and Danzo just gave an evil smirk, not knowing what was going on above them. Kanoha ground level, thing were a mess to say the least. Ninja who were able to fly by using some odd machines were attacking the village and everyone was in a panic. Sora growled, he wished Naruto was back from the mist so that he could help but he wasn't so that was that. He and the others were able to fight a few of the ninja but these guys were tough. He soon came to a rooftop that had Niji and Shikamaru. The three of them were watching the flying ninja retreat. What do you think is up with them? Asked Shikamaru. Simple they ran out of chakra. Niji stated. Great, now we can plan a counter-attack. Sora said. Right, let's go to the Hokage and ask what he thinks what we should do. Shikamaru said as the two other boys nodded. With Naruto in a swamp. Thank God for water walking who knows what kind of poisonous creatures are here. Naruto said as he walked along the water's surface. I really don't want to find out. He then decided to look up and to his surprise, a ninja was coming straight for him. Fly thanks to some odd machine. He of course flipped out of the way when Kanai were thrown at him. The hell is wrong with you? All Kanoha ninja must die. The flying man said. Yeah? Who says that? Naruto replied. Says the people of Sky Country after our defeat in the second great shinobi war. Man these people know how to hold a grudge. Naruto thought as he woke up Kira. Kira, let's fly. The raven nodded as she melted into his back. The hell! Yelled the sky ninja. Surprised? Well you bakas aren't the only ones who can fly, Naruto said with a smirk as he had wind circling himself, effectively going into his kajubu furiu, spiral gale fist. So with a sonic boom, he charged straight at the sky ninja frozen in fear. Since he didn't move, the man got his face caved in and twisted around as he was sent flying back. All Kanoha shinobi must die my ass. Naruto said as he deactivated his wind taijutsu style, and Kira fell asleep on his shoulder. Nothing but a bunch of widows who talk big. He then began to walk towards a village in the distance. Another flying ninja saw all this happening and flew off to tell their master of what he saw. About halfway to the village, Naruto decided to rest and check in with Kanoha. Sora are you there? Oh thank god Naruto. Where are you we just got word that you helped Mist Village rather quickly. The hell are you? Ah yeah that figures. I ran into some hollows that were attacked at such a kid's caravan. Didn't want IWA to blame us for the death of their kage. Right the old man wants to know where you are right now. Sora said. A near some village at the border near a swamp. Naruto deadpanned and he knew that somehow that Sora was talking with the kage. Okay Naruto. I will make this short. A bunch of sky ninja attacked the village and we took some loses but not that much. However. A man named Shino helped a lot of our injured and sighed that some of the sky ninja were attacked that village you are headed to. He is worried about his student, Amaru, so the Hokage is sending a three-man cell to protect him as he goes over there. He also wants you to protect this Amaru. He described her as a tombo. Sounds like a plan oh and tell the old man that I just took out a sky ninja over here. Seems that they are attacking over here as well. Naruto commented. Alright then and remember this INA ranked mission because they attacked us and all that. Sora said through the link before he cut it off. Hmm I think I could use a little more help than that. Naruto thought through the link. What are you talking about? 
came two voices that Naruto smiled at. Foo, got a nice timing. Anyway, I am at the border of fire country near some village by a swamp. Apparently a group of Sky Ninja went and attacked Kanoha so they need me to protect some doctor's apprentice in this village since Sky Ninja are attacking over here oh joy. You wanna help? Absolutely. I have been waiting to test out my new powers. Fu said with a giddy smile. I am a bit far but I will see what I can do. Gara replied with uncertainty. Well, I do know Kanoha is sending a team over here to protect the doctor, and if I know the old man, he will probably send a team out to find and destroy the Sky Ninja's hid out. Right. We are on our way. Came three voices then too. Okay then seems Yugura wishes to help as well. Naruto commented as he got back up and ran the rest of the way there. A day later with Kanoha at the beach. Well this is annoying. That jerk wants us to defeat a few of the Sky Ninja. Sai said to Sora. They were currently on a cliff, overlooking the massive ships that had all the Sky Ninja on them. Well, Shikamaru has a great plan. But I'm wondering if those birds of your will actually hold us. Sora commented. They will I have rode on them before. Sai reassured him. Well I guess that is it then let's go kick some ass. Sora smirked. Very well. Sai replied as he drew up two large birds and the boy took off, causing mayhem to the Sky Ninja. While that was going on, Shikamaru and Kakashi were observing from the beach. The plan is going smoothly Shikamaru. Thank you now our fourth member just needs time to prepare. Right Kakashi started to say before they felt the chakra presence coming out of the water. What they saw was a boy in green clothes with what looked to be a sword in his hand. I am not too late am I? The boy asked. Ah uh, who are you? Kakashi asked. I am Yagura, the former fourth Mizukich. I heard from Naruto what was going on so I decided to help. I think Fu and Gara are coming as well but I do not know if they are coming here or straight to Naruto. Yagura informed them. Troublesome blonde all right. Shikamura said as he radioed his fourth member, telling them they had company that was friendly. Through all of this, Kakashi wondered what Naruto did to gain Yagura as an ally. Um, Yagura-san, if you were the fourth, who is the fifth? Kakashi asked. Oh, that is an easy one. Naruto's godmother, Mei Terimi, is the fifth Mizukage. Yagura replied to hear Shikamura mutter troublesome while Kakashi had a flabbergasted look on his uh face. Yagura just kept on smiling. Kanoha, Hinata, Sasuke, and Sakura were the ones who were picked to protect the doctor named Shino. They wr already at the gates, but Shino seemed distracted for some reason. I wonder why you are not here, Naruto. Sasuke gave Shino an odd look as they left the Hidden Leaf Village. Back with Naruto. Our blonde hero is walking through the streets of the village near the swamp. People took one look at him, and then got back to what they were doing. It would seem that they have had odd people pass though through this place before. Not that it mattered to Naruto, since he didn't really know who the person he was trying to find so he asked the nearest person to him. Excuse me old man, what do you want? Well I have been sent to protect some girl from a bunch of sky ninja at least I think so. Naruto said airheadly, making the old man sigh. All that I know about her is that she looks like a tomboy, and her name is Amaru. Oh her. The old man rolled his eyes and said, try the outskirts of the village I think that silly girl wanted to check out something odd. Alright thanks. Naruto said as he left. Even though he got a very vague answer, it was a start. Like Shikamaru says troublesome. Another day later, the village was bigger than he thought but even though he circled the place, he went into the nearby swamp to see if she was in there. Eventually, he found her, and she was in trouble. Sky Ninja were pursuing her. He smirked as he had the perfect entrance for this. He had Kira merge with him, and went wind style again. With a vicious smirk, he shot off toward her attackers. As Amrao was running from her pursuers, she heard a rather large sonic boom. She turned to see a blonde guy with black wings taking out her attackers with ease. In fact, all he did was use his swords to stab the thing on their back and it exploded, getting rid of the sky ninja. The boy then did a flip and land on his feet, his back facing her. Wow, could have been a better entrance. Naruto said as he got back up, his wings turning back to Kira. Well maybe you should have back flipped so you were facing the flames Kira deadpanned. Yeah. I should have done that. Amaru couldn't help but fall anime style at the scene of Naruto talking with a raven that could talk. A uh, thanks for helping me, but who the hell are you? As if just noticing her presence, he said, Oh, name's Naruto Uzumaki. I was sent to protect you. Seems your master is worried about you. Oh. Amaru said as she blushed at the fact that her master was worried about her. Just look her up I am not describing her. Okay let's head back to your village because they are probably already there. Naruto said as he started to walk away and Amaru followed. Along the way, they talked about random things. 
He learned that she was a very good doctor but had very little training in the ninja arts. She only had enough training to defend herself from bandits. He could also tell that she had a crush on her master by the way she talked about him. He was glad but a bit freaked out that she was in love with an old man, but it was not his business. When they finally got back, they smelled smoke. That is never a good sign. Naruto said as Amaru ran into the village to see that buildings were on fire and no one was around. Hello? Hello? Is anyone there? The red-haired girl yelled as she walked up the stairs to a higher level of the village. That was trapped for as soon as she stepped on the last step. Machines firing kunai shot all their kunai at her. Now Naruto may be fast but he could not get to her in time. But he did watch in shock as an old man ran with all his might to get the girl out of harm's way. But he took all the kunai himself. Sensei. The girl cried as he fell down the stairs. Ah hell. Naruto said as he ran over to them. This was not good. Now I wish I was a medic nin. No need. Came a familiar voice. Naruto turned his head as he smirked at the forms of Sasuke, Sora, Sakura, and Hinata. Oh thank god. Yeah, Sakura does have some training in the medical arts so she is not totally useless. Sasuke commented. Oh yeah? Yelled Sakura as she bashed him over the head. How about now? Please we have a mission. Hinata said as he tried to calm them down. Those idiots. Naruto said as Sakura and Hinata began to check up on Shino. What is up with you two? Naruto commented. H.N. Sasuke said, much to the annoyance of Naruto. In the end, it seemed that Shino could not be saved. Amaru broke down but they helped her bury the man. Naruto stayed with her for a bit, but he still had to help clean up the village and look for the villagers. They had all split up to find the village in the swampy areas around the village. He hoped Amaru would be okay. After all, she did lose someone she loved. Soon he came upon a mist-covered clearing and just waited for one of the others to come. Sakura and Sasuke soon came to him. Naruto? What are you doing? How is your search coming? Sakura asked. Guys look. Naruto pointed to some ruins in the mist. What the must be those ruins that Shino talked about on the way here? Sasuke commented. As they walked through the misty ruins, they noticed a lone figure just standing there. The mist cleared and they saw it was Amaru but something was wrong. She was acting differently. Amaru what are you doing here? Naruto asked. She looked up and her eyes started glowing red, never a good sign. I am Rabi, she said in a monotone. When war fills the land, and the hearts of people are filled with darkness, I shall rise again. The hell are you talking about? Sasuke asked. Naruto however was pale. The Rabi was the zero-tailed masked leech oh this was so not good. I will be born after eating the darkness in people's hearts, and my growth will know no bounds. She muttered as she shifted forms into the purple-skinned leech itself. Then I will rule the world. Back with Sara and the gang, Sai was tiring out and Shikamura know that. So he sent a signal to let Sai know he was done. The ink ninja sighed as he flew to the beach and ran into the forest behind the beach. That is where Shikamaru and Kakashi took care of the idiots who flew to the beach to kill them. So troublesome. Shikamaru sighed. Now it is your turn fourth member. Back with Naruto. The leech quickly swung both of its hands and swatted Sasuke and Sakura into a few rocks, knocking them out. The leech then created multiple arms and quickly wrapped them around Naruto. I sensed that you had an evil power but it is gone now why did you get rid of it? I wanted that power. Arg. Too bad for you, you freak. Wind style. Blade burst. Called out as blades of wind formed on his person then blasted outward, shedding his fleshy captor. You cannot win you are a failure in life you will lose. Ranted the leech. Oh shut up. Naruto yelled as he charged the beast only for it to whack him into some rocks with its regrown arms. Oh come on, lead the insects, Kancha Kasaki, insect queen. Came a very familiar voice to Naruto as many different kinds of insects started to swarm the giant leech. Naruto turned his head to see Fu, his girlfriend. Nice timing Naruto said as he got up. Thanks but I am not the only one, Gara also hold his ass over here too. Fu said with a smile. Before Naruto could say anything, he heard the monotone of Gara, protection of the sands, metara tai subure, metal forming sands. With that, a huge wave metal sand formed into flying spikes to impale the annoying leech. Nice turn out you two. Naruto commented as got back up, but saw the monster leech reforming itself. Oh this is getting us nowhere fast. Naruto deadpanned. What do you suggest Naruto? Fu said a little freaked out by this thing. She is like a demon container we just have to get through to her. Naruto said as the other two nodded in understanding. They didn't know the girl that much, they elected Naruto to do it. Right thanks. 
Naruto deadpanned before he turned back to the possessed girl. Amaru! Amaru, wake up! Aren't you supposed to be Shino pupil? Come on, you gotta obey your senior's teachings so get out of your funk. A monotonous Shino sensei was heard as the evil leech dissipated to reveal the girl named Amaru, but then she passed out. Well at least she is okay. Naruto commented. After a bit, she woke thankfully. Naruto had made some clones to gather Sasuke and Sakura. The real Naruto waked over to the shaken girl and put a hand on her shoulder. She seemed to be out of it and Naruto said hey you okay? It seemed like touching scenes so Fu got a little jealous but kept control. It would not do well for Naruto if she killed someone he was supposed to protect. Naruto smiled and said you did well. I am glad you came back to us. That is probably what Shino would have said. Yes she muttered as she wiped some tears away. At that moment, Sasuke and Sakura were waking up. As soon as Sakura saw that Naruto was holding her, she freaked out and punched him into a tree, making him go poof. Sasuke just flicked the Naruto clone and made it disappear so he could get up. You two okay? Yeah what happened? Sasuke said, not entirely sure how it happened but thankfully, it is over. Naruto said as he gave a bright smile. Oh. These two are Gara from Suna and Fu from Taki. Naruto introduced his two friends to the two members of Team 7. Oh so this is your girlfriend. Sakura said teasingly. You got a problem with that pinky? Fu said with narrowed eyes. No I was just teasing Naruto, sheesh. Sakura said. Before they could say any more, the ground shook violently. Naruto decided to go into the ruins to see what was up. Amaru also wanted to but Sakura and Fu said not but Naruto said it was okay, so Gara went in with them. Ji Sakura said. Well let's go find those villagers. Fu ordered. HN. Sasuke replied as they left the site. Naruto has the weirdest tastes in girls. Thought Sasuke as they started to leave only for the ground to shake yet again, but a whole lot more violent. They turned and saw something they would never see in their lives. The ruins were rising out of the ground. What the fuck? Fu yelled the thing that was on everyone's mind. Naruto. All the three of them yelled. With Shikamaru. It is about time. Shikamaru muttered. The enemy's preparations should nearly be complete so we will be facing an all-out attack. There is no need for you to worry about that. Came another voice coming out of the water. That is because is it unfathomable for me to fail. Shikamaru just smirked at the form of Shino. Then they heard a rumbling sound as the ships were falling apart thanks to Shino's meddling eating bugs. When it seemed that the ships would be unable to move and pretty much not reparable, Shikamaru told Shino to call off his bugs. It was Yugura's turn. The Nara nodded to Yugura, who was already on the water when he saw all the bugs in the air. Yugura nodded back as he began some hand signs, water style, serpents of the maelstrom. Soon, a very large maelstrom appeared and began to suck in the ships, but that was not all. Serpents made of water broke through the remaining ships, destroying them further. Soon there were no ships left as the jutsu dissipated, all except for the large pieces of metal floating on the surface. Their job was done for now, they hoped the others were doing as well as them. Back with Naruto. On the floating ruins, Naruto, Amaru, and Gara were sneaking around the place as to not get caught by some random sky ninja. This place was not for Konoha, that was for sure. I can't believe we are flying in ruins no less. Amaru commented, I agree. Gara replied, I have seen it all now. Naruto deadpanned, but we will be okay trust me. After that, they ran as fast as they could through the place, looking for the guy who was controlling things. They soon came upon a light at the end of the tunnel, only to be stopped by some sky ninja, which Naruto and Gara took care of pretty easily. As soon as they entered the next room, Naruto and Amaru froze in place, too shocked to do anything, while Gara was just confused. Well done you two. I knew it. I knew it. Amaru called out as she ran to the person of the voice Shino. Naruto, however, was rooted in place. She leapt into the man's arms and cried I believed it. I believe there was no way you would die. Oh, uh, why are you here, mister? Naruto said as he walked forward. What is the meaning of this? The man smirked and said there's only one way I could be in this place, Anchor Vantian. I guess simpletons like you would not get it. At this, Amaru's eyes widened. Her master never talked like this. It may look like some flying ruins, but it is Sky Country's greatest creation. The best weapon of mass destruction. But wait you got hit but all those can I. Naruto, he faked his death. Kira spoke up from his shoulder. It would seem was playing us all. He seems that bird figured it out. In any advent, she is correct. It was easy to fool Sakura and Hinata into thinking I was dead. While I was gone, 
I just had to repair my organs with the body revival jutsu. At this, Amaru had a shocked look on her face as she looked up to see that her master had an evil look on his face. Never heard of it must be some forbidden crap. Naruto growled out. He was beginning to hate this guy. Isigara finally spoke up. You are with these people you were playing us the whole time. You are correct Gara. Shino smirked as he grabbed Amaru's head and threw her toward the two boy, which he just crashed into Naruto. Ah hell Naruto said as he slowly got up, making sure not to hurt Amaru, but it seemed that she was in shock as he was still as stone. You see, all I wanted for fourteen years was to gain the power of the Rabi as my own. This girl was just a pawn. Laughed Shino. I found Amaru and I found what I was looking for in Kanoha. He then began to rant on about the power of the Rabi and the dark chakra is control. When Amaru called out to her master on last time, he mocked her telling her that love and crap like that is useless. It looked like it broke the girl. That was all it took was all it took to make Shino surrounded in dark chakra. Naruto stayed back to see what would happen and was kinda freaked out because Shino was transformed into a huge man like looked like a muscle builder, and his hair was now black. This is the power of dark chakra and the body revival jutsu. This is my power. Naruto had enough and charged him with Gara. They both punched him in the face. It didn't seem to do anything to the man. My turn. Shino yelled as he rushed the two boys and beat the shit out of them. Ah hell. Naruto said, trying to get back up and saw that Gara looked knocked out. Damn you. Naruto yelled as he created a massive amount of clones only for them to be destroyed by some odd dark wave that Shino made. Through the smoke, he was able to get another punch in but Shino was once again unaffected. Shino smirked and punched Naruto into a wall. The large man then sat down in a large throne and said, So, this chair was meant for the prefect-bodied king. Like hell, Naruto started as he got pissed off and started beating Shino into the ground. I would accepted you as a king. He then ended with a raisin gan to the man's face. He then went over to see if Amaru was okay. But like usual Shino got back Yuo to explain that his jutsu was reforming his body over and over. The man then blasted Naruto to the throne via his super revival fist. After a few more rounds of beating the shit out of each other up, Shino knocked Naruto back over to Amaru. The power of love is weak. Destruction is power. You idiot. Love is stronger. I love my teacher, my friend, Fuchan, so much that it hurts. Naruto yelled at the man. Then let's hear it. What did Amaru's love turn into? Shino yelled which made Amaru look up. In the end, she will just be hurting why. Shut up. Naruto yelled through with this crap as he charged the man again, only to blown back by some dark energy. Naruto? Amaru asked as he saw Naruto just lying there. My my power, that didn't hurt at all. Naruto yelled as he slowly got back up. Naruto! Amaru said surprised. Here I come. Naruto yelled at Shino and charged him yet again, only to be beat down again. Revival fist! Shino called out and sent Naruto back to Amaru and thankfully she caught him and glared at the large man. Shino laughed and said you have that look in your eyes Amaru. Don't forget you're hated and never forgive me. Amaru the took out a scalpel but began to cry as a memory came to her. Amaru, I can still fight. Naruto mumbled as he slowly got back up. I don't mind that you're sad or frustrated. You can't hold it in right? And I'll take it all for you that is my job after all. Amaru just stared in shock at her protector, the tear running down her face. Naruto then turned to Shino. Don't move, I am going to kick your ass. Amaru started to whip her, Naruto, I'm sorry, I'm sorry she then brought her scalpel to her neck in a stabbing motion and attempted to stab herself. But Naruto stopped her with his arm, getting him stabbed instead. What's wrong? Don't do that. Naruto said weakly, you gotta keep on living. That's why that's why you have to tell him goodbye. He then smiled brightly and said, You have not told him yet, right? How you really feel? You tell him, okay? Yeah. She said quietly as she began to help Naruto with his wound in his arm. As she was doing that, she began to tell talk about how she was praised by her master and thought she was beautiful, greatly annoying Shino. I have always loved you, sensei. She yelled out only for the jerk to start laughing like crazy. Naruto had enough of this and he began to really gain some strength and punch the shit out of Shino yelling at him about forcing his ideals onto Amaru. I will never forget you for that. Naruto yelled and was going to send a raisin gan to the man but was cut off by a loud sound wave. A ninja in purple outfit but no headband had interrupted the fight. What the hell? Naruto yelled out, and secretly, Gar sent a few sand needles to Shino to weaken him. I have come here for the scroll. The new guy said. Shino slowly got back up and smirked. So, 
Orochimaru wants more of the scroll how well here. He then opened a compartment and threw a scroll to the man and then he fell through a hole in the ground, letting him escape. He knew that somehow, he was beaten because he could not use chakra like before. Besides he now looked like a very weak old man thanks to Gara. Not yet. It is not over yet, they heard him yell. The new ninja just sighed before disappearing before he could be questioned. All right, Amaru, I am going after him. Now we might be able to save him. You can just give up later if you want. Now let's go find him and the villagers. She nodded and they split up to find the villagers and Shino. What she found was all the villagers and Hinata and some holding cell. Naruto and Gara found the passage to Shino, who using the room he was in to suck all the chakra in the area and help himself to turn into the leech itself. They cursed at this fact and well there was not much they could do. Then Gara had an idea and sent a crap load of chakra to the leech and Naruto caught on. Send a massive amount of his own chakra to the beast, overloading it and pretty much destroying it from the inside out, and in the process, killed Shino. Though the decrepit old man did tell them that even didn't know what was going to happen. Naruto cursed and told Gara they needed to get out of there, and he agreed. They ran for all they were worth. Of course the remnants of the leech were going crazy in the place. Once they were at the entrance, they saw Amaru and all the villager plus Anata in some boat looking thing. Oh thank god you guy are okay. Naruto called out when he saw them. Hinata looked and said, Naruto-kun. Along with Amaru. Naruto looked around and saw a lever of some sort that probably launched the boat off the flying vessel they were on. So he ran over to it and he heard Gara yell from the boat, Naruto, what are you doing? Hey, someone has to get you guys off this thing and destroy it. Besides, if my eyes are not playing trick on me we are over water and you don't do so well with water. At this, Gara looked over the boat and indeed see the water. Now Gara is usually stoic about a lot of things, but water and not one of them. Water. I can't swim. H.H. He started freaking out, and it took Hinata to calm him down. Don't worry, I will be back that is a promise. Naruto said, getting everyone's attention again as he pulled the lever. Naruto. Amaru yelled as the boat went soaring down. Naruto just smiled as he began to destroy the place with well-placed rays and gans. Down on the beach. At first they were shocked that a huge fortress was flying over them, but now they are not that surprised that Naruto is blowing it up with his powers. Troublesome blonde. Shikamaru said from his spot on the beach. What do you expect from him? Sakura muttered. Nothing less. Fu smiled while the others laughed. We should move. Kakashi said as the other agreed. Back with Naruto. I can't keep this up. Naruto panted from his position in the middle of the fortress. He then thought to use just one Raisingan to get rid of this place once and for all. This do this, here is the taste of my new jutsu. He yelled as he charged a Raisingan but kept on feeding chakra to it, and eventually, it turned pure white as no one could see through it. Time to end this. Hurricane Raisingan. Just as he touched the ground with it, the effect was intent. There was a large white explosion that shifted into a pure chakra hurricane with Naruto as the eye of the storm. Holy shit. Sakura yelled from her spot on the ground. Great another troublesome jutsu. Shikamaru commented. Wow. Fu said with sparkles in her eyes. Natuto, however, was not falling and it seemed that the blast stunned little Kira so he would not be able to use her to fly down. Ah crap, and I have not perfected the flying part of my wind style taijutsu oh well, not like I have a lot of energy at the moment. He muttered as he started shooting down to the ground. Amaru, having gotten out of her eye at the attack that Naruto had used, used a spar flying machine to save Naruto. Of course it was not fast enough to get to him, so she got rid of it and catched Naruto as they spiraled downward. Amaru, don't be so reckless. Naruto said tiredly. Just who do you think is being reckless? Bakashi replied. Had to shay. Naruto commented. At least I won't be alone on my way down. I won't leave you alone. The girl said as she held on tight to him. I'll stay with you. Thanks said Naruto. He then took a chance. Hey Amaru, want come back to Konoha with us? You can be on me and Sora's team. I would love to. She said with a smile as they clashed into the water.